Hello, everybody. How are you doing, guys? Welcome yourselves over here to the Wolf Den podcast. I'm great. How are you? Will, what are you doing? I'm just getting myself ready. I got to protect myself. You literally you. said, I have to be right back. I'm going to get tissues. And I said, that was, why did he, why, oh. Well, I did, I did have to get tissues. That wasn't okay. a lie. But I also had to get this and my gloves and my mask to protect myself from you. Because right. I don't know if you know, I saw this on Reddit. You can get COVID over the internet. You can. It's Wood all, got it's it. All the five, it's all the 5G towers that are out there. I mean, Wood's sick and like... Who does he see? And he spends a you lot know? of time on the internet. There he you go. He does spend a lot of time on the internet. It is contagious through through the air through this. So everybody here is gonna get sick now. Yeah. Sorry guys, you've all got it. Yeah. But I'm got safe. I'm ah oh, oh, crap, there's a hole in my glove. I'm I'm Where did you get those gloves? Uh these are actually uh cooking gloves I used to handle raw meat. You get these on Amazon. Oh. That's weird. Yeah. It's Hey, it's either get salmonella or get COVID. What do so. you do? What do you what do you lick your fingers after you cook raw meat? No, but I handle <laughs> other things. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So today's the COVID special. We're gonna talk. This is a video game podcast, guys. It's a very we special episode of the Wolf Den. We podcast. have to talk about video games. But I also yeah. wanted a platform to be able to explain exactly what happened to me in the past week because it was a fucking wild ride. <laughs> also, I was going to tweet it all out and I was like, this is way too much to explain. Uh, long story short, I have COVID right now. Can't you tell? <laughs> so I'm just, uh, I just can't move from this, from this freaking, I just can't move from this, from this like, like eight by ten cell that I'm in. So when you need food, does Sam like shove it under your door or? Yes, I got pizza uh, coming in an hour specifically so he can feed it. It'll fit right under the door. <laughs> I had to take my tree in though. Yeah. Sam's Sam's Jewish, so he doesn't need this. Um, so we're gonna today we're gonna talk about what the hell happened to me the past week. But yeah. uh, we're also going to talk about the Nintendo Indie World <laughs> because I actually didn't watch that. I was a little busy. <laughs> um, we also I want Will's thoughts on the analog pocket because he got it. Uh, I made yes. a whole ass video on it, but then he got his own. Um, uh, we also I have, have a, a story about that. <laughs> we also have a bunch of Ubisoft news uh, yeah. for some reason. Uh, I didn't want to put a lot of Ubisoft news in, but I felt like. There was one after the other after the other, and if we didn't talk about, we talked about one thing but not the other, right? And not the other, like it, it's a snowball effect. So, right. I'm gonna raise you a tad. Let me know if he's too okay. loud. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, then we got a bunch of other uh, mumbo jumbo that we can talk about. Um. Anyway, I hope you're all good. I hope you're staying safe. It's going. The 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 illness is going around. Everybody's getting sick. Uh, it's 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 very bad. Like everybody I know is 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 some sort of ill, and everybody I know is apparently getting infected with it too. So here's what happened to your boy Bob over here. Uh, last week I I did a lot of work. Uh, I was working with my good buddy Pacini. He does. He's been uh filming uh mostly the ad stuff and editing with with me he's been picking me up and taking me to the office and we've worked together a lot it's been great uh he had a sore throat last week so that's where it all started uh so he was getting tests all week for other jobs though so he was he was all negative all week so he thought it was just your, your run-of-the-mill allergies or whatever right. on thursday i got a sore throat so i was like great he got me sick, so it wasn't allergies. But I was like, it's not COVID, because he's going to be getting negative tests. So, can't be that. Friday, I have to go up to uh, Rhode Island to go move my girlfriend. She's moving from Massachusetts to Rhode Island. So, I this weekend, I was supposed to go up there to help her move. So, Friday rolls around. I get on the train. I'm on my way up, because I'm feeling better. On Thursday, I kind of felt like garbage. Uh, and it didn't hit me until 
around like 5 30 when i was at the office uh i was taking my japanese class and i just got like a wave of like like a head cold and like i just i just felt like trash um but then friday morning i woke up and i was like i feel i feel a lot better uh and it can't be covid because he's getting all these negative tests can't be COVID. So I might as well just freaking what? I'm, what am I gonna say? I'm I have a sore throat. I can't go help you move, dear. <laughs> It'd be a terrible excuse. So I got on the train. Uh, 20 minutes into the ride, Pacini calls me and he says, "Hey, my PCR test from Wednesday." No, he said, "I have bad news." And I said, "What did you delete the footage? It's fine. I have all of the footage. You don't need to. I got it. We, we're good." And he goes my PCR test from Wednesday just came back positive. So immediately I knew that I had COVID because he, he's the one who got me sick and he had COVID, but I'm in the train now locked into a ride up to Rhode Island. I'm locked in. What I should have done in that moment was gotten off at the next stop, but I was not thinking right. I was trying to figure out what the hell I was going to do. And what I ended up doing was I got there, I got a hotel, took a rapid test, and that came back negative. But all of his rapid tests came back negative. So I knew that this was not the right, it wasn't right. I knew I knew that yeah. I, I still, something was up. So from Friday to Monday, I stayed in the hotel room and I just didn't move. I just didn't go anywhere. Um, I just assumed that I had it even though I got, I had a negative test. Um, so on Friday, I was frantically trying to get a PCR test as soon as possible because I know those take a while. So I called like the little Rhode Island hotline to like get myself a test. Um, and they were like, uh, they were like, oh, is this, uh, I was like, I need one as soon as possible because I'm, I'm hopefully trying to like get the hell out of here on Monday. And they're like, oh, is this for travel? And I said, yes, it's for travel. And they said, oh, well, it, our tests our, our tests in Rhode Island are not certified for travel. And I was like, okay, well, then what if it's not for travel then? And they said, yeah. okay, well, the next test you can get is on Monday. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm here till Monday and I'll just hang out. Um, so uh, also, if you're from out of state, you can't get a test if you have symptoms in Rhode mm. Island, in the whole fucking state of Rhode Island. <laughs> They just won't give you a test if you have symptoms. You have to be asymptomatic. So I was like, okay, I'm asymptomatic. So Monday rolls around. I go to the little testing site. I go up there and they say, okay, here's your test. Uh, we, you'll hear about this in uh, about two hours. And I was like, two hours? Is this a PCR test? They're like, no, it's a rapid test. And I was like, why? I wanted a PCR test. They, they were like, uh the state of Rhode Island won't allow us to, uh, th they want us to save the PCR test for people who have symptoms. So I can't get a PCR test if I have symptoms because I'm from out of state. Right. But I can only get it if I have symptoms. So I said to the lady, what if I have symptoms then? And then she yelled at me. She was like, I think you should have said that and that's illegal and you, and you can't lie to us. And I was like, okay, goodbye. And I just, wow! I just walked away. So now I'm fucked. Yeah, but at that point, as far as I know, I'm negative. I just have a sore. Th I had a sore throat on friggin' right. Thursday. So I was. I, I, so what I I accidentally booked two uh, tests at the same time. So because the website sucked, and I accidentally booked it. There was no like confirmation, so I accidentally booked it twice. What I did mm -hmm. was. I went to go get back online. I put my hair down. I like changed my jacket and I was going to like pretend to be a different person and just say I had right. symptoms this time. Uh, Cause I had flashbacks to remember hurricane Sandy and, and everybody yeah. there was like a, the gas shortage. I did yeah. exactly that to get more gas. <laughs> I almost actually did that because the local CBS had take home tests, mm -hmm. uh, but they were only allowing two per customer. So I almost went back in with a different jacket and put a hat on sometimes tests, sometimes you got to do it i uh, i should have i bet you the teenager behind the register wouldn't have recognized me it's every man for himself out there yeah <laughs> uh well uh, so on friday i got the i got the take-home test and it came in a two-pack 
yeah, but only one of them had the liquid in the vial, so I think the other one was like fucked. But anyway, that I shoved all the way into my brain. I shoved it yeah. all the way in because I actually called my roommate, who's a nurse, and he like you know showed me like a video on how to do it and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I said I shoved it in until it wouldn't go in anymore. And he goes, "No, you could have done it further. It was like a kink in your nose. You could show." I'm like, "Okay, I'm not fucking doing that." <laughs> Um, but this one, the one that I took on Monday yesterday, it would, they just wanted me to swab like a little bit on the outside. Yeah. And I was like, well, this is stupid. But anyway, so at this point, I'm online getting ready to fool them into thinking I'm a different person. Then E sent me uh, a link where I could get one here in New York, a PCR test that uh, was an 18-hour turnaround. Theirs was a 72-hour turnaround. Jeez. So I was like, I can go all the way home and still have a quicker PCR test, I might as well just yeah. do that. And in the middle of trying to book that, I was sitting on a bench like in the middle of Rhode Island, like in a hotel lobby somewhere. And so I was I was booking that and I got the results already for the rapid I just took and that was positive. A okay. rapid test, well, right. unheard of. So I was like, well, fuck, now what? I'm supposed to get on a train in a little bit. Now I'm just stuck in the middle of Rhode Island. So I like had a little existential crisis. I'm like freaking out. Everybody's trying to touch me. I feel like <laughs> I'm like a leper and I need to stay away from people. Yeah. Because I do. But like every little person's like bumping into me and I'm like, for the love of God, man, like, you know, I'm a ticking time bomb right now. <laughs> so I just, I just freaking, uh, I had a little existential crisis trying to figure out what to do. Everybody's asking me questions. I'm ignoring everybody like on my phone because I don't I don't know the answers. Uh, yeah. And then finally, uh, it was decided that uh, I was about to rent a car to drive back. Um, I was going to stay with Hannah, but then that would be bad because I'd be. Yeah, because that, that was like my only option there. But that was that would have been bad because I would have gotten her sick. So I was going to rent a car. And then Pacini, the guy who got me sick in the first place, <laughs> said, I feel terrible. I'm coming up there and I'm getting you. He drove three and a half hours up, <laughs> picked me up, and we took our little COVID selves back to New York. Uh, not stopping or anything. Just yeah. straight down. <laughs> and now now I'm here. He evac'd me from Rhode Island. Um <laughs> So that's how that happened. And then a pa there's a freaking PCR testing place literally across the street from me. So today I went oh, across wow. the street, got my PCR, and we'll figure out what the hell happens there. So that's my wacky weekend. Um, Also, while I was staying in the hotel, my neighbors like next to me were mm -hmm. like at midnight. They were like screaming at each other, throwing shit against the wall. Oh, God. stuff i had to call security and i was like ex i was like excuse me um it sounds like my neighbors are like beating their kid or something <laughs> and they had uh, the the security came up and was like hey quiet down in there and they left and i was like that's all you're gonna do they like just beat the <laughs> shit out of i heard the beating the shit yeah. out of somebody anyway so that's my COVID story. I'm perfectly fine. I have no symptoms anymore. I had a sore throat and like a head cold for like a day. Uh, didn't know, complete, completely oblivious to the fact that it was COVID. Uh, two weeks ago today is when I got my booster. And so did Pacini. The guy who got me sick mm -hmm. was with me when we got our boosters. And it takes two weeks to, go, to take effect. So I truly believe... That that is why I feel fine right now is because uh, it took a while to to, to right. go through, uh, and that if we had gotten our boosters a little earlier, I feel like we would be totally fine. His wife uh, got her booster a week or two before we did, and she doesn't have it at all. Uh, and they f live together and sleep in the same bed. Right. So that is why in my tweet I said, "Get your booster," because if I got it a week earlier, I feel like I'd be all right. Uh, see people people in the chat are it's like talking to our mother they get hung up on the <laughs> wrong thing they're all hung up on the fact that I have a girlfriend yeah. leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> anyway anyway we're all fine as far as we know
Yeah. Uh, anyway, how was your weekend, Will? Oh, uh, you know, just hanging out. No big deal. Uh, we had cause someone my wife works with tested positive. Oh, that's good. So there was there was a little mini freak out here, but we're okay. She she's fine. Uh, all my friends started either testing positive or started to feel sick. Mm-hmm. So there's that. Um, so I spent most of Sunday driving around to different CVSs looking for take home tests. <laughs> and they're sold out almost everywhere. Yeah. Uh, I had to get some from my friend, which was like, a dr- it was literally like a drug deal. I had to go to his house, like make a trade. I had, I had cupcakes for him. Um, <laughs> and then uh, went home. And then the next day, the CVS, I got a text saying that the CVS by me had them. Um, and I looked all over the store. Pro tip, don't look on the, on the floor of, of the store. Go to the teenager behind the cashier and ask him. Because <laughs> he'll yeah. know and he'll just give them to you. And don't that ask I, the pharmacist. They don't, they don't want to talk to you. I did the same thing when I was in Rhode Island. I was like, do you do tests here or is it just the take-homes? And they go, oh, it's right here. And in the front, you have a bunch more and it's four per person. And I was like, okay, I only need four? one. So, yeah, you it was only four. Let us have two. And, and there's two in each one. <laughs> So, so go go so up the, to Rhode Island then. Go up the there. CVS, oh, okay. So the CVS by me had, you know, had the test, and you can only take home two, and it was ten dollars a pack. There's another drugstore like two towns over that was gonna let my wife take four, mm-hmm. but they wanted forty dollars a pack. Yeah. So like, I don't understand why. There's this big price discrepancy between different stores. I don't even know what the difference in tests are, to be honest <laughs> with you. I don't was, know. Like, Apparently, there's good test? ones and bad ones. It was 30, yeah. but it came in a two-pack, but one of them didn't work. So <laughs> one of them right. just didn't have the... It was just a bunk test. Yeah. Uh, but also, the whole thing didn't work because I was <laughs> negative, and I knew yeah. that I wasn't negative. Um. But yeah, so remember, New York is fucked. Like I, yeah, New York like, is. You told very me that bad. there was an outbreak at Anime Expo, which was uh, weeks ago. Yes, uh, and I didn't yes. go to Anime Expo, but I was in Koreatown, and there were a lot of weebs there. Yeah. Um. And so, I tried to get a test when you told me that, and I couldn't find any. And that was a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um. And not that I felt sick or anything. I felt totally fine. Right. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, yeah. No, I think now like Long Island is at like 9% infection rate, which is like up dramatically from like a month ago. Luckily, uh, deaths are way down, but it's still yes. like a, it's still like a like a like a bad sickness or or could be yeah. Yeah, it could be, you know, really bad depending on, on what happens. It's just kind of a roll of the dice. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think. <laughs> Every 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 stat that has come out so far has said if you ha- if you're vaccinated and boosted, mm-hmm. your chances of getting severely sick drastically go down, and your symptoms should be no more than a cold. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the no, lesson I- here is get your ass to a vac- vaccination site and get vaccinated. Yeah, I feel like uh, if I had gotten it sooner, I would have been a little better. I yeah. I truly feel that, and I wouldn't be I would have been able to help my girlfriend move. Instead, she had to move yeah. everything all by herself. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was it was the perfect alibi though to get out of oh, having yeah. to do any manual labor. Dude, it's a perfect alibi to get out of anything. It's true. Think Sorry, babe. Yeah, oh, I can't do anything. I got I got, I got the corona. I got COVID, and then I just sat in a hotel room and got Uber Eats all weekend. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, you you guys you guys are smart. You know what to do. Get to protect yeah. yourself. Also, just just stay out of major cities. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's really I'm on my way up to to on Friday when all of this shit was going down. When I figured out I probably have COVID. Um, mm-hmm. I saw like five tweets in a row that were memes about uh, 
COVID specifically in Brooklyn. <laughs> People were like, if any, if I see anybody in Bushwick going out this weekend, I'm gonna fucking cancel you, yeah. or whatever, because they're because you know, uh, there was it was so rampant. Yeah, uh, but anyway, uh, it's only gonna get worse because the holidays. It's only gonna get yeah, because everybody's gonna yeah. be seeing each other and stuff. So whatever. I'm just going to keep getting tests until I'm good, and then hopefully maybe I can have a life again. But until then, I'm going to yeah. be playing Xbox in my room for like a week and a half. There you go. There you um, go. But I have, I should have what I need to make a video this week because I have an ad for this week. So I have to make a video this week. Right. <laughs> Next week, might not make a video. Might feel like taking some time to myself. I think I deserve There you go. Uh, also, maybe there won't be a podcast next week. Um, okay. That's fair. <laughs> Uh, so this might be the last, does that mean this is the last podcast of the year? Maybe. Uh, I think it does mean that. It does mean that. Yes. Wow. Yes, it does mean that. See you later, everybody. All right. So no different than usual? What the fuck does that mean, Eric? What are you trying to say? What type of bullshit are you trying to say to me right now? I guess this week is going to be no different than usual. Oh, yeah, because I'm posting the video. Yeah, I'm not yeah. doing anything different. I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm still going to, I'm I'll probably going to end up streaming. Uh, yeah. Uh. Anyway, uh, uh, make it a good one by telling us about your girlfriend. What do you want to know? <laughs> see, th see, I I've been very quiet about this because a lot of you people can hang and you're great. There's some of you in this chat that can't hang and you're weird, and I don't want the weirdos to get all weird. All right. <laughs> Where were you people? I'm trying to last protect week... her from the weirdos. Last week, I had mentioned that his girlfriend's gift didn't come in yet. It came in, yeah. by the way, so you're fine. Um, oh, well, she's not going to get it, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not coming to Christmas. Oh, Spoiler coming. alert. You um, won't fucking see it. But, like, there was only, like, maybe, like, two people going away, Bob, as a girlfriend. Now, all of a sudden, this whole chat's blowing up with. Because I try to, you know, brush it under the rug. Like, oh, no. I know. No, you, know I, who, you know who really doxed the fact that I had a girlfriend? Wood. In his in one of his videos, he said he got dinner with Bob and his girlfriend. And everyone's like, girlfriend. Uh, I must have missed that. <laughs> yeah. Ghostman says, Will has a wife and a child, but Bob can't have shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's my story. I have COVID. I'm there totally fine. Uh, everything's going to be great. Uh, I just have to sit here until we f I figure out that I don't have COVID anymore. And the only way I can tell is the freaking PCR test that take like three days. So well, I mean, technically, like, if, you, if you like stay home for another week or two, you should be fine. Technically, I've been quarantining since Friday. So yeah. But I mean, how long until I when I get a negative result? How long after that are you supposed to quarantine for? I always assume that it's 14 days like from from the positive test. 14 days? That's so yeah. long. <laughs> I know. But, you know, I think that's long enough to make sure that the virus inside of you dies. Right. So... 10 days from symptoms, 10 days, 14 days, 14 days is the usual. Uh, on the thing, it said 10 days. Like on the on the okay. test thing, it said 10 days. Uh, Bob, did you see where Scootish moaned your name last night? No, and I don't want to. <laughs> oh, that, sound, that sounds bad. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something else about COVID. Look at the positive. Lisa didn't shut down your PS5 the wrong way. Oh, God, I hate you guys. I, you remember I said some of you can't hang? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. Uh, it was 10 days God. when I got it a couple months ago. Oh, yeah, Eric got it. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I have to, like, wear a mask and, and friggin' my roommate gave me... He's a nurse. He gave me rubber gloves and shit. So when I leave this room, I have to be, like, hazmatted up just to like make coffee and go to the bathroom and stuff. So I'm just trying not to leave the room like at all. You should just move the coffee machine into your room. I've been thinking about it. I have no, the problem is I have no room in here. It's I'm so surprised small in here. You don't have like a little like Keurig or something next to your PC. 
you got to see coffee. the floor in here. It's already like <laughs> like my luggage is there. Yeah. Uh, all I have like clothes everywhere. Uh, I brought paper towels in here so I don't have to like use his you know paper towels he might touch. Uh, mm -hmm. I got he he got me black and white cookies. So nice. I got, I got black and white cookies. Uh. And yeah, and I have a little garbage bag. I got clean up stuff. That's my hazmat garbage bag. I ate ramen in here before. I spilled the uh, ramen juice all over my desk, my Wolf Den desk map. But guess what, boys? Uh, you just pop a little water on here, and the uh, stain's gone. Wow. I've been meaning that. to talk to you about that because I got coffee on mine. And the fact that you didn't make the desk mat coffee proof is very concerning. Uh, Wash it. You idiot. I gotta, you, I gotta you, take it home from work. And I'm yeah, not going you, into the office again until January. It's good to halt. It. You have to you have to just put it in the washing machine with a little bit of whatever detergent you use and make it make sure it's cold or, or warm, not not right. hot because you can melt the rubber. And then uh air dry it, and then you're good, baby. No more right. coffee stain. I have spilled coffee on mine. So you should be totally fine. And you can get yourself one at wolfdenapparel.com. Anyway. Anybody else got any questions about uh, my girlfriend, I guess? <laughs> <laughs> How's your taste buds? Fine. Wood lost his sense of taste. Wood is apparently, trying to compete with my COVID. <laughs> apparently, with the new Omicron variant, uh, losing your taste buds is not a common symptom. Interesting. Anymore. Yeah. See, Pacini said that he lost his taste and smell for like a little bit, uh, yeah. but he said he also that happens to him when he gets sick. Like he just gets okay. when he gets congested, he he just loses like his taste and smell. But yeah, yeah, no, I was totally I was totally fine. The only issue I had was on Thursday, I had a like a head cold and a sore throat, mm -hmm. uh, and then I felt fine. Right now, I feel fine. Uh, I had like a runny nose really yesterday. Scootish is going to get COVID just to speed run it better than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Stay home, everybody. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, who wants to hear about uh, video game news? You know? Yeah. Yeah, well, we play here. video games here. Uh, also, in the chat, we I, we got a lot of notifications that I didn't even touch. That Oh, my God. Yeah. We got so many. Um. <laughs> We got Sir Smithers with eight months. Watching you turn Scootish into a Mario 64 womp was one of the funniest things I've seen all year. Eight months. Cheers. Thank you, Sir Smithers. Will, did you see? Uh, I figured out how to... Um, I figured out how to change textures in Mario 64. I did see that. You put your face on Mario and you put Scootish's butt on a womp. I sure did. Uh... It is a program called like uh, Quad sixty four, I think. Mm -hmm. Quad sixty four, yeah, and you could just straight up just edit the textures. It's freaking awesome. Um, so anybody could do it. It's really easy. Uh, what else did I want to say? Um, George McFarlane, thanks for the hundo bits. Hey, Bob and Will, I usually don't watch this show live, but I decided to tonight. Hope you guys are well. Thank you, George McFarlane. Well, I am. <laughs> I'm also fine. I'm just gonna go crazy. Um, Razzle Jazzled with the 15 months. Season's greetings, Wolf Bros. Thank you so much. Uh, AJ with 45 months. Oh no, I need a mask. Yeah, everybody wear a mask. Yeah. I'm not gonna mask up. You all need to mask up. <laughs> uh, Din Sock. Thank you for the Prime subscription. Crenshaw, thank you for the 12 months. This is the content I'm here for. Not really. Well, thanks, dude. Uh, Hector Blusen, thank you for the seven months. Glad to see Bob is still in this world. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you get better soon. Uh, Dirty Glasses, thanks for the hundo bits. Smash Bryman, thanks for the four months. Gamer Lady, thanks for the nine months. Feel better. Thanks. I'm fine. Thank you very much. Thrill House, thanks for the hundo bits. He was getting you back for getting him booted from the Nintendo program. What? Oh, wood. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? 
I don't understand. Uh, Soren Starseeker, thanks for the hundo. Oh, are you talking about... Are you talking about Jackson? I don't understand. Soren Starseeker, yeah. thanks for the 100 bits. I'm so sorry to offend, but Resident Evil 4 has aged terribly and was virtually unplayable to me. So glad it's getting a remake. Will, how would you uh, like to dig into this, man? Uh, I'm just going to find that comment. Uh, here we go. Right click. Uh, ban? <laughs> Yeah, there you go. We're done. You can do <laughs> That's that. That's it. Next question. Uh, Tech Nanner, thanks for the hundo bits. Uh, sick boys, yes. Kerfluffle, thanks for the four months. Happy holidays, Bob and Will. Also, sub anniversary. Yay. 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 Thanks for being here. Battle Tank Kenobi, thanks for the six months. Oh, hey, it's prime re-up time. Wow, yay. Y'all stay safe now. Thanks, Battle Tank Kenobi. That's a reminder, everybody. Uh, you get to prime subscribe every month you have to manually renew it so you get a free yeah. prime subscription every single month so a link that amazon prime account and uh get a free sub anyway now we can talk about gaming news yay yes uh so you said you did not see the nintendo indie world that happened on december 15th of this i week. did not Okay, because I actually did. I watched the whole thing, and oh I still don't wow. remember some of these games. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. That was before my shit show of a week. Um, yes. Uh, so it started off with Sea of Stars, and, uh, expected to be released holiday next year. It is a retro-inspired turn-based RPG, and it is a prequel to The Messenger. It's a prequel? This is this prequel to the messenger tells the story of two children of the solstice, a lunar monk and a solar blade dancer. Fans of classic RPGs with modernized elements will want to check out this game's moving story filled with twists and turns. It's fluid and engaging turn-based combat and it's freely freely traversable world. Plus it features music from renowned uh, Yasunori Mitsuda who composed music for Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross and Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Uh, I I'm so I didn't see anything about this indie world. I didn't even hear about any of the games after it was it came out. So like nobody was excited about anything here. Um this seemed to be one of the biggest deals. I'm yeah. very disappointed <laughs> that I mean it looks really good, but it's an RPG and I'm not it's, into RPGs. It's specifically it's like a JRPG from like the mid nineties. It's, it's definitely trying to ape that, that chrono trigger final fantasy six style. And that's just like, not for me, dog. Like, I do think is, it's, it's hard. Not for me. I think it's pretty cool that these guys decided to hard change genres and keep it within mm -hmm. the same universe. I think that that's pretty cool. However, I loved the messenger and I want yes. more of the messenger and yes. this is completely different. So I'm I'm yeah. a little I mean I get it. It's just not for me. So I'm, I don't I'm even personally disappointed. Cuz art is like the art direction isn't even the same as the messenger. No, but it looks awesome. Like I think it, this uh, is Yeah, this I'm not saying gorgeous. it doesn't look I'm not saying it doesn't look good. I'm just saying like I don't see how this connects to it at all. Not yeah no it, it doesn't look anything like the messenger at all. Um, that's why I didn't I didn't I had no idea it was uh it yeah. was in the same universe. But yeah I I would have loved to have seen more of that style. I I need more platformers basically. When I see these indie directs I troll through it for platformers and I don't think there was any in this whole game. I mean this whole yeah. direct. Anyway, well, there were a couple I think maybe not like platformers but more like. There's definitely like true side scrollers in this. Let's see. Uh, Let's see what else we got next, here. This next game, I don't think is one of them. Uh, Alicia, the Oblivion of Twin Goddesses, coming out spring next year. In this puzzle game, cooperation is the key to safety navigating a deserted temple. Whether you undertake a solo outing or explore the game as a two player co op journey with a friend, you will need twin sisters, Aisha and Leisha, to work together by exchange. By exchanging clues and operating devices that can help you go deeper inside the temple. But be careful. The temple is filled with all sorts of menacing monsters and treacherous traps. Some of which can trigger different endings. 
the heartfelt music coupled with the emotional story will completely will complement your journey towards uncovering the secrets residing within. This game has a gimmick where the gameplay is different depending on whether or not you're playing it in docked mode or portable mode. What? The two sisters do different things. So if you're playing in docked, you're playing as one sister. And if you're playing it portable, you're playing as another sister. Okay. It depends on how that affects the experience. Yes. Like, like, well, it like, says. I mean, it says you can play it single player. Right. So, I mean, I'm assuming you can beat the game by yourself, even if you play as just one of the sisters. So, yeah, I just want to know, like, what is different about the gameplay when you hold it in your hands versus having it docked? Right. Like, what is there mechanical differences? Like, are there like Wii I mean, U there, gamepad there style must, like gyro controls or something? Be, there must be like, uh, you know, touchscreen controls or specific gyro controls for handheld mode and things I, like that. I could see that being kind of cool. I'm a little interested. Yeah, in that. It, yeah, it, I'm interested. To see how- I wonder if it's like one of those things where you would want to take it out of the dock, like in the middle of playing, <laughs> just to like yeah. switch it up. <laughs> I don't know. That could be a thing. Yeah. This is looking like a 3D platformer. Yeah. Anyway, next we got Locomotive. Welcome. Coming in summer 2022, climb aboard the Rhesus Express and investigate a suspicious death of Lady Unterwald in this single-player point-and-click comedy adventure. You'll play as a straight-laced lawyer, an amateur detective, and an undercover agent at different points in the story. Along the way, you'll meet a fully-voiced cast of quirky characters and solve head-scratching puzzles to prove your innocence, figure out who done it and what locomotive inspired them to murder in the first place. It looked like an old lady died. Yes. So maybe she just died. <laughs> like that could just happen. This definitely looks like all those old 90s PC adventure games from like LucasArts and Sierra. Right. Um, if specifically there was a game like this called, I think it was called Murder on the Orient Express from the guy <laughs> who created the Prince of Persia, Jordan Mechner. Right. The difference is that was just a straight murder mystery drama. This looks like a parody of that. Right. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that there's a completely different uh, tone that Locomotive is trying to go for. That's a Yeah, I thought that was a movie. Yeah. You said it was a game? It's a game, yeah. It's uh, it was a point and click adventure game. Oh, Agatha Christie. It is also a book. Yes, or maybe I'm. Maybe oh it's no, called, maybe it's is called the first else. game in the Agatha Christie series. No, no, look for the one. Hold on, Murder on the Orient Express. No, you're right. Was that by jo- by Jordan Mechner? No. Okay. I'll fi- I'll figure out what game you worked on. Oh, or I can just I can just look. Uh do Train. The Last Express. It was something with Express. <laughs> so So there was also the book in the movie. Right. Well, murder, I, I was probably thinking of Murder on the Orient Express because that's the most famous right, murder right. mystery on a train story ever. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, so there's that. I don't care <laughs> <laughs> about this game. Right. Next, After Love. After wow. Love EP coming summer 2022 from the creative director of What Comes After and Coffee Talk comes a stirring oh. narrative about love, loss, and lyric, uh, lyricism. Set in Jakarta, Indonesia, After Love EP focuses on a young musician, Rama, who struggles to compose music after his girlfriend, Sinta, passes away. A mixtape of visual novel, rhythm game, and narrative adventure, After Love EP challenges you to complete an EP of music to fulfill a promise made to Sinta. There are multiple endings based on the choices you make, as well as an original soundtrack from Indonesian band, uh, Laufa Laufa and striking art direction from Soyatu. This 
looks kind of sick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, th this looks this actually looks pretty cool. I'm kind of into it. I really liked Florence. Florence was great. Yeah. I'm getting big Florence vibes here. Is this a yeah. mobile game? I kind of would rather play it on my phone. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it was ever a mobile game. It looks like it should be a mobile game. Yeah. It's on PlayStation? Hmm. And Steam. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Well, maybe it's a Switch thing. I don't know. Uh, yeah. You played. It's by the Coffee it's Talk by people. The creative director of Coffee Talk. And you played that, didn't you? I played. I played the demo of Coffee Talk. Coffee Talk is like, it's primarily a dialogue focused game where you like you pick dialogue choices mm -hmm. to like progress the story. The only like traditional gameplay in Coffee Talk was trying to make a latte. <laughs> that was very difficult to do with uh, Joy Cons. Uh, yeah, um, but I can this imagine. looks like it has a bit more gameplay in it, the rhythm aspect of it specifically. Uh, Linosis in the chat says, how did Nintendo allow this in their direct? What's your problem with it, Linosis? Yeah. Explain to everybody. We're gonna we're not going to continue the podcast until you tell me exactly <laughs> what the fuck the problem is with this. Yeah. I'm just kidding. We're moving on. Yeah. Uh, that looks cool, though. Uh, is it out? Yeah. Uh, no. No. Uh, what do they say? Summer next year, summer twenty two. Oh my god, that's so far. It looked like yeah. a lot like... of these games are far. The what was it? The Messenger prequel is holiday twenty twenty two. Whoa, yeah, and they look like they're like far along. <laughs> there's like yeah. there's like a lot they of these trailers. More of that game than they did any other game too. So that's crazy. Uh, but here's a game that's out right now: Dungeon Munchies. Oh. If you've got the munchies, then this 2D side-scrolling action platformer should definitely satisfy your craving. With the help of the undead necro chef Simmer, you'll hunt down monsters, then cook and eat them. There are around 100 dishes that provide various abilities, mix and match, to get the right meal for your playstyle. So there you go. There's your 2D side-scrolling platformer. What in the, in the freaking <laughs> RPG element hell is this? There's like all this mostly... shit you gotta do to like to like make stuff. I, I think it's mostly just like recipes that you can eat that give you different abilities. I'm getting uh dead cells vibes. Mm. Is is it a roguelike? Side scrolling uh, action don't... platformer. I don't think it's a roguelike. Cause you uh it looks like you uh you know, there's like hit points on the enemies and stuff. Yeah. And you got to like level up your your weapons with food. Yeah. Interesting. All right, we'll see how that goes. People like yeah. dead cells, maybe they'll like this. I don't know. Yeah. Uh next up is Figment 2 Creed Valley. Available in February of next year. Make your way through a rhythmic world set in the human mind in this musical puzzle adventure game. Nightmares are spreading chaos everywhere in the sequel to the award-winning game Figment. It's up to you to put to put an end to their fearsome schemes. Uh, play solo or locally with a friend as you wield your trusty sword in engaging combat, manipulate environments to solve compelling puzzles, and have symphonic showdowns against some musically menacing bosses. Okay. Uh, another rhythm-based situation. Yes. Uh, it's an isometric, like action game. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I yeah, don't know I wasn't. It. I wasn't into this one. I didn't. I didn't think this was anything too interesting. Next is Let's Play Oink Games, available now. Uh, a collection of board games from developer Oink Games is coming to Nintendo Switch. Uh, go on thrilling and risky treasure hunts in deep sea adventure. Become the biggest invent. Become the biggest investor in startups. Uh, catch the sketchy rogue and don't get caught in a fake artist goes to New York. Recover supplies with your fellow astronauts to survive in moon adventure. The games are designed to be easy to understand while capturing the feel of their original tabletop versions. You can play all the games locally and online with friends near and far. So this is literally just a collection of board games. I 
This reminded me for some reason that I saw on the business account that I have an inky pen subscription. Uh, I have uh, not touched that. Not you, me. It was I. You personally. I. It said my name, not yours. Odd. So I need to cancel that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think I signed up. I think I only signed up for like the free trial. When I yeah, like well, they make you put it in a credit card. Yeah, for the free trial. So I definitely, I am pretty sure I did it for for footage and then just forgot about it. And I've been yeah. paying for it for like a year. <laughs> well, I'll fix that later. Uh, so I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, uh, cl the classic what is it? 51 Worldwide Classics with Clubhouse Games. Yeah, that, that, yeah. yeah collection of board games it's like good but it like kind of feels like just flash games yeah so i do feel like there's room for another game like that Something yeah i mean that was really extra. popular this would be good if you know you because like board games are shockingly huge i say shockingly but like it always surprised me how big board games are yeah and i know like you know with the pandemic going on people have been having a hard time trying to play board games and i think this is a good way to get people to play at least this company's games you know if they can't if they can't do it in person they can do it if they don't have the game or if they don't have room for the game they could just buy this and play it on their switch i mean right now is a good time to play board games on the computer or like you know on a console yeah. so you don't have to see anybody um uh, clubhouse games has weird stuff where like you can't play certain games with uh a certain amount of people like like not all of them are multiplayer and they yeah. all allow different uh amounts like of people it's it's weird so uh and also a lot of the games are, like missing features like in blackjack you can't uh you can't split, I think. Like, there's all this weird right. shit. Um, so I feel like there's room for 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 a better uh, party board game situation, but I just don't know if uh, a yeah, developer it's, it's like this can like, do it. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to like replicate the board game in a video game setting because, like, what do you do? Do you just do a do the board game then you're not really taking advantage of the video game medium mm -hmm. do you make it more of a video game then you're taking away from the original intent of the board game mm -hmm. uh anyway endling oh this just looks like it's gonna make me cry uh, coming out in spring 2022, as the last mother fox, you'll need to keep your three cubs alive and leave them to safety in a world ravaged by humanity. In this game, blending stealth, survival, and adventure, you'll make your way through devastated environments to reach the one place on Earth where humans can't hurt you. In the end, how many of your cubs survive the perilous journey is up to you. That's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> Skate like, oh man, this, this is just, I can definitely sit, see like they're sitting around in a boardroom going, how do we make the bleakest fucking game ever? What's that movie with the rabbits that's supposed to be like really messed up and like gruesome? Watership that, like, Down. Cartoon? Yes. Watership Down. Yeah. Is that, is this like that? No, I think this is, I guess you can call this a cute version of the road. <laughs> is that a guy with a gun <laughs> holy yeah. shit it's messed up it's like a hunter with a handgun yeah exactly it's like you're trying to help your you and your three cubs trying to get it trying to get to you know the safe haven through the apocalypse and oh by the way your kids can die <laughs> yeah you might not make it with going. all of them it's, yeah. it's messed up I think I kind of want to play it <laughs> I mean, like, I would definitely be into this, but I know, like, it, as soon as one of those little baby foxes die, I'm just stop playing the game. No, I'm gonna reload saves the whole time. <laughs> anyway, Ali yeah. Ali World. Wow, what a fun, Woo! exciting. This actually, I was excited about this the first time I yeah. saw it. Uh, coming out February eighth, twenty twenty two. 
flip and flow through the vivid and vibrant world of Radlandia, meeting colorful characters as you grind, trick, and air your way to discover the mythical skate gods on your quest for Narvana. Traverse a delightful and weird world as you take on missions, challenges, and make new friends along the way. Uh, this looks cool. I really liked Ali Ali. Yeah, uh, Ali Ali two? was very good. What's the one I played on the Vita? I mean, Ali Ali one and two are very similar to each other. So yeah, uh, but it this looks drastically too. different. Yeah, this is way. This is like a whole like a whole game. <laughs> yeah, it's like a full on adventure game. Yes. Um, Ali Ali's just got a fun gameplay loop. Yeah. Uh, just a two D Tony Hawk. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm 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 down to try this out. Hopefully, it's got the same sort of uh. I could see that that sort of gameplay uh, could translate well into like a nice adventure game like this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I'm down for that. Uh, River City Girls 2. Will, how excited are you? I'm pretty excited. It's coming September. Uh, sorry, summer next year. Uh, Way Forward is back with the sequel to the acclaimed beat em up River City Girls. There's trouble once again in River City with high stakes, meaner streets, and even more over the top humor. Take control of one of six characters, including returning powerhouses Kuyo and Mis- uh, Misaku. River City Girls 2 features new moves, enemies, arenas, and items, not to mention branching paths as well as a new soundtrack by the first game's composer, Megan McDuffie. Get the fists flying solo or team up with a friend locally or online. I did not play River City Girls 1, but beat-em-ups are my jam, and this looks like a really fun, really exciting kind of beat-em-up. It's very pretty. Yes. Uh, Uh, Getting a little bit of Scott Pilgrim vibes. Well, yeah. I mean, Scott Pilgrim... You know, any beat em up you can think of, Scott Pilgrim ripped it off when it, when it, um, when they were making it. But what's cool, like the original River City Ransom on NES was, had a lot of like RPG elements to it. It had a lot of, it had branching paths and it had a lot of humor. It was very funny. And this game looks like it's emulating that style very well in a more modern context. So, mm-hmm. and it's very weeb like. So, if you're into that shit. <laughs> uh yeah. I'm not really into beat em ups, to be honest I know. with you. I know you're not. But it just they, feels they're, like they're mashing. Fun. It is. <laughs> um so another summer twenty twenty two. Yeah. Uh and this next game is spring twenty twenty two. It is Parkosaurus. Whoa. Parkosaurus is a dinosaur tycoon management simulation where you take care of your dinosaurs by constructing well-designed exhibits, researching specialized technologies, and maximizing profits to expand into the ultimate dinosaur theme park. Do you favor development or guests? Do you do you favor development for guests or your dinosaurs? Okay, nobody cares about any of that. We only care if you could open the gates and have the dinosaurs eat the guests. So I remember. Uh, there's a there's a Jurassic World version of this. It's called mm-hmm. Jurassic World Extinction. We played it at E3. I did not like it very much. No. Um, and I why did we play we, it? We got I like an appointment. Because, yeah. I, no, I don't think we had an appointment. I think it was something we can get it and play easily. This was like as the day was winding down. Oh, I think we did. I think I was just trying to impress Pacini because he. Yeah. It was a movie thing. <laughs> um. <laughs> I, but I was I remember I think it was Yahtzee Kuroshaw who said Jurassic World Extinction doesn't work because that game is all about keeping the park up and running. But the whole reason why we like the Jurassic Park movies is because the park fails. Yeah. <laughs> and the dinosaurs get out. But they do get out in the game. But they're not supposed to. It's yeah, a you're big supposed problem to keep them in. Get out. You're supposed to keep them in. Yeah. And that's and that game that sucks. Because <laughs> like Oh, they're my, on fire. They're on oh, fire good. in this. Oh, the dinosaurs can eat people. Okay. Oh, hopefully, God. hopefully you can let that happen in this. Yeah. Like that's why, that's why people play, you know, roller coaster tycoon, and they want to make a roller coaster that doesn't work and kill as many people as possible. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so hopefully you can do that in this game. Yeah. Anyway, don't starve together. What? I thought uh, this has been a thing. 
I think this is a different one. This is coming spring 2022. Uh, Fight Farm and build, Fight Farm build and explore together in a the standalone multiplayer expansion to the oh. uncompromising wilderness survival game Don't Starve. Enter a strange and unexplored world full of odd creatures, hidden dangers, and ancient secrets. Choose from over a dozen playable survivors, each with unique powers to help you unravel the mysteries of the constant. Cooperate with your friends in a private game or find new friends online. From December 15th to December 21st, Nintendo Switch Online members can download and try out the game, the original Don't Starve of the Nintendo Switch Edition game in the latest game trial. So that time is almost over. <laughs> okay, so so this is a thing, it's just now a standalone. This is a standalone multiplayer expansion. On May 7th, 2014, they announced that a free multiplayer expansion Don't Starve will be coming later that year, as they had initially decided not to create multiplayer uh, they clarified on their forums that they originally had not been, quote, confident that it would actually work both in concept and implementation, but had changed their minds. Okay. It was in early access in 2016. Okay. All right. Interesting. All right. Well, now it's on the Switch. Yay. Yeah. Chikori! Wasn't this somebody's, like, f- favorite game of the year or something? <laughs> Uh, I think so. Uh, I it's saw, available now. I saw cool things about this. Yeah. Uh, a painting adventure game about trying to be somebody. Chicory, a colorful tale, takes place in a coloring book world where you can draw on anything, use your painting powers to explore new places, solve puzzles, help your friends, and change the world. Chicory, superstar, artist, and wielder of the brush, is missing, and all the color in the land vanishes with her. It's up to you. Uh, Chicory's number one fan to pick up the brush and fill it, fill in for her. It's a big job, but you're ready for it, probably. Hold on a second, my pizza's here. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, and yes. this game is, like I said, this game is available now. Feel free to move on to the next one if you want. All right. Yeah. So there you go. Hope you like uh, coloring books because there, there's a game for you. Uh, Baby Storm, January 21st, 2021. Uh, Baby Storm is a cooperative party game. Watch over unpredictable kids as they unleash chaos in your kindergarten. Maintain order, run, clean, and feed your way to the highest score in solo or up to four players. Listen, I do this in real life with one toddler. I do not want to do this in a video game with multiple kids running around. Not fun. Also, these are not kindergarten kids because kindergarten kids by then are potty trained and they're clearly wearing diapers. So, bad game. Zero out of ten. There, there you, you, you heard me say it. <laughs> uh, is Bob back from his pizza yet? I actually can't see him on my screen because otherwise that's when my computer drops down to two frames a second as if he's sharing his screen with me. Um... What up? What how how y'all doing? Any any of these games interesting to you at all? I will say, if you're if you're a fan of open world adventure games, not not open world adventure games, sorry, open world like crime games, like your GTA's, and you want to play it on the Switch, uh, Saints Row Four is currently three dollars on the Switch eShop, and I got it for one because I use my gold points, so you can do that. These people need to respect the the contactless. You know, you set the option for contactless, they just want to touch you. Why how explain this? What? <laughs> because I've had people I've had delivery people like, you know, knock on the door and ask me what to do with the food, even though I leave the instructions leave it that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying there's an option on the thing for contactless for just leave it yeah and this guy was like baffled that i said just leave it on the floor i was like are you sure it's like yeah i'm gonna get it in two seconds how how long how long are you doing this man (laughs) i don't know i'm I'm trying listen i'm trying to help you i don't want to i don't want to open the door 
and give you a big old hug and a kiss. All right, it's gonna yeah. we're gonna have problems. Um. Anyway, uh, where are we now? Did you do Baby uh, Storm? <laughs> we did Baby Storm. Uh, cool. Said, so excited look, about it. I look after one baby. I don't want to look after a lot in a video game. I don't blame you. Uh, but next is Grime Summer 2022. If you've if you've been wondering what your favorite streamers have to say about Grime, wonder no longer. Crush your foes with living weapons and consume their essence with your sentient black hole. Grime is a fast and unforgivable, uh, unforgiving souls like Metroidvania coming soon to Nintendo Switch. So, what have my favorite streamers been saying about Grime? I I'm don't wondering. know. Tell me. I don't know. I don't know why they would put that in there. <laughs> I don't know why they would put that in there and then not say not say anything from streamers again. Yeah. Anyway, this is reminding me of uh, that other game. Uh, Blasphemous? Blasphemous. Blasphemy. Blasphemous? Blasphemous. 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 Yeah. Uh, this looks kind of cool. Uh, I don't know how I feel about the like 3D art style. Um, but I don't know. I, I'm uh, this is uh, finally a 2D game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, of the the Munchies game. Sure. <laughs> this seems more my style though, with like fast action, like you yeah, know, stuff. So uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll give this a shot. Looks kind of cool. Uh, what is this, Gerda? I didn't see this at all. Gerda of a flame in winter coming sometime next year. Uh, when the snow stops falling, a small Danish village of Tingalev will no longer be the same. Walk the path of Gerda as her quiet life is turned upside down during World War II occupy during the World War II occupation of her home. Choose where to go, how to act, and who to trust in this intimate narrative RPG light experience uh, inspired by real life events. Oh, uh, interesting. It's, it's got like a weird 3D watercolor. It's like 3D with like a watercolor filter on it. Yeah. It's very strange looking. Anyway, uh, timeline. Time lie? Time lie. There's a I lot of games. Lie. In this. What the yeah. hell? <laughs> Available now. Every second matters in Time Lie, a stealth puzzle adventure. That lets you control time like a media player. Uh, perceive oh. future events. Perceive future events to plan your escape strategy from the past. Sneak past enemies and manipulate time in this companionship journey featuring a mysterious cat and a little girl with precognitive powers. Control both the girl and the cat simultaneously, timing their movements and actions to complement each other. Escape detection, distract enemies, and ultimately escape the world they are trapped in. This looks kind of cool. Uh, I'm into stealth stuff. So like that aspect yeah. of it looks kind of cool. Um, there was like a period of time where there was like a bunch of like uh, isometric stealth games like on mobile and stuff. This yeah. is kind of reminding me of that. Uh, I'm kind of down for that. I hope that a lot of these games have demos. I need. I, I'd. I'd like to try some of this stuff out before I. Yeah, spend I don't all my... remember which games had demos and which games don't. I feel like there haven't been as many demos on Switch, on the Switch eShop as there really can be, especially for indie games. Like they help out a lot. Right. But I know it takes a lot of time and money to like actually make a demo. That's like. Yeah. No, I get it. I mean, they're of, they're demos, yeah. so so they don't have like a. Like I, I mean, they're indie games, so they don't. It's not like they have the resources of like a full AAA yeah. to like make uh, ancillary content or marketing. So yeah, uh, I I totally get it. But I mean, the more demos, the better. Yeah. Also, a lot of these games are short, so you're like you're yes. like already giving away an hour for free. Hey, Rob, dude, we just asked you what you asked. You don't have to be a dick about it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, behind frame. Uh, what was this? Spring next year. Behind Why the frame. Why is all the music the playing on all of these? Scenery. I don't know. Fix your computer. Uh, guide brush strokes and solve a variety of puzzles to help an aspiring artist compete her masterpiece amid 
her burlesque neighbor's gaze, and his pesky cat. Uh, as her paintings start to take shape, <laughs> uncover an emotional tale of chance and artistry revealed behind unrelated yet familiar moments. Oh, yeah, I have no idea what this game is. Yeah. <laughs> it just looks like an anime. I haven't seen a single gameplay element. What is it? I, I don't know. Puzzles. It's I a puzzle game. I might have slept through this one. Uh, yo, you know what looks good? Spinch. You ever seen this? No. Spinch. It's like a, it's like a Super Meat Boy style, like a, like platform, but it looks wild. It looks like an L yeah. LSD trip. What is that? Just live action, oh. full motion video. <laughs> this is a weird trailer. Just show me the gameplay. Ah, right, whatever. Spinch looks cool, yeah. but that's a okay. that's a game already. I don't think it's on the Switch. I asked right, if the well, vax next... keeps you from getting COVID. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it depends. It depends. Like it, it depends on a variety of things. If it if it, it better protects protect you from... against it, so you have a better chance of not getting COVID when you have the vaccine. Yeah, but it doesn't and mean it's if... not a full fledged, you know, like guardian of it. But it it definitely if, helps a lot. You... Do get COVID while you're vaccinated, your chances of survival drastically go up and your chances of getting severe symptoms drastically go down. Rob, you're not banned. You're here. Why yeah, you got to be what, weird about we're it? We're talking here. to you. If you or, keep yeah, you're right here. Like, maybe maybe a mod made a mistake. Like it's okay. Yeah. It's all right. We're all cool here. Also, if you like, you can get COVID with a vaccine, but not have any symptoms. So like it, yeah. it, it could still like save you from having a horrible yeah. time so uh like me so, i have covid and here i am perfectly fine probably because yeah. i got the booster two weeks ago um and if you keep shouting that we banned you we will actually ban you <laughs> <laughs> um and lastly omori uh coming out in spring 2022 i keep uh, almost drinking back. this which is like isopropyl alcohol I keep picking it up. Well, anyway. That'll cure COVID. Travel back and forth between two strange and vibrant worlds, each one brimming with colorful friends and foes to uncover a forgotten past. You'll experience an unconventional story and, tur and turn-based battle system supplemented by warm illustrations from renowned artist Omocat, uh, who also produced, wrote, directed, and coded much of the game. Was this the last one that they did? Because this, uh, this seemed to... Uh interest a lot of people like this seems to I be think, one of the big deals. yeah i think this was the one more thing turn-based battle system yeah i was into it it looks like a cool art style yeah uh yeah i don't know why this was the one more thing i guess omo cat is a very popular artist it's it looks awesome yeah but again i don't see any gameplay so According to Mecha Dragon, it's very dark and disturbing. Yo, I'm down. I'm down for a cute art style, dark and disturbing story. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that looked cool. So yes. overall, that's the whole thing. Overall, kind of a wash with this one. Uh, yeah. I guess this was just like, just rounding out the year with what they had left over to announce. You know, I, I think the problem is every Nintendo Direct, everybody thinks they're going to, that's when they're going to announce Metroid Prime 4 and the Breath of the Wild 2 and all that. Even when it's ex explicitly about indie games. So, what I mean, Ali Ali World, we knew about that already, and that looks pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, sea of Stars was like another big announcement, but it's not our thing because it's an RPG. Uh, that's yeah. the one that's like uh, part of the messenger. Uh, and what else was there? After Love EP, I'm actually a little interested in. Um, what else? Uh, Omori, people are interested in that. I I don't know how much I want to get into it. Grime, I uh, hopefully there's a demo for that. That's the one that's like a like a yeah. 2D Dark Souls type situation. Um 
And then Ends <laughs> Endling Extinction for is forever. That's the sad fox one. I'm down for the sad yeah. fox game. <laughs> um, you know, I said this was a wash, but there's a lot of things that I'm a little interested in. That's the thing about indie games. Like you don't realize like you're interested in them until you see them or you actually play them. You know, and even when you see them, like, you don't really get the full experience. So I feel right. like once these games do start coming out and once, like, people actually play them and talk about them, I think. I think we'll, like, have a better idea of what these games are about. Yeah, we. I mean, obviously, we need to see and play these games. But a lot of them are out, are over a year out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's bad. I don't know. Uh Anyway, uh, is there anything in here that anybody in the chat is interested or like super excited about? Because honestly, I haven't heard much about this uh, this indie direct from from, from yeah. people who who saw it. I it, didn't even it, know it more, was happening, and I didn't even know it happened. It more or less came and went. Um. Anyway, I'm in our own chat arguing about COVID. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, notifications here. Uh, where do we leave off? I don't remember. Uh, uh, I'm going to say I Ganthet. Think. Thanks for the yeah, five Ganthet. months. Yeah. Howdy. 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 M. Lee Dawn. Thanks for the three months. I appreciate it. W. B. Del Toro. Thank you for the prime. Super Naught. Thank you for the prime. Spoopy Girl. Thanks for the nine months. Spoopy girl, thank you also for the two gifted subs. I appreciate it. And for the 100 bits, happy holidays, Wolf Den at an event. Just wanted to pop in for a sec. I appreciate you popping in. Stay yep. safe out there. Please stay safe. Don't end up like Bob. No, don't end, never. I am not the example. Regal Taco says spooky earthbound is cool but i need earthbound hd which one was spooky earthbound uh oh my cat what that yeah. was spooky earthbound mecha dragon said that was like spooky earthbound oh okay we i yeah. need to see the gameplay <laughs> oh yeah. wait i've seen it i wait oh wait i've seen this game Now I Have now you? I need to. I've seen people play this. Yes, I've seen this. This was on a uh, thing on Twitch for a while. Here's some uh. actual freaking gameplay. Yo, how come you? Okay, there we go. Yeah, there it is. Yes, it's Spooky Earthbound. Yes, okay. They should have put this in the trailer, dude. This looks so much better. I mean, I still don't want to play it because it's an RPG, but I feel like people would like it more if they saw uh, the, the actual they gameplay. They might have showed this in the direct itself. Oh, some of this looks familiar. It looks it looks like Earthbound. Uh, pe people who this when this released, people were streaming it and they were really excited about it. So yeah, uh, yeah, that I understand why that was like the kind of one more thing. Yeah, makes more uh, sense now. McFly or die in the chat says, "Let's change the subject and talk about breast implants and not COVID. Who likes them and who doesn't?" Uh, my wife is actually watching a documentary on Paramount Plus called Explant about women. I didn't know where to, that was going to go. <laughs> who want to take their breast implants out because it causes them a lot of uh, illness and like actual damage to their bodies. So uh, do your research before you think about getting breast implants, ladies and men. Some men get them. No judgment. It's totally cool. Uh, but they're I... not all the cracked up to be is what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, it depends on who you are. Maybe maybe you'll yeah. want them. Maybe it'll make you feel better. Go nuts. Have a good yeah. time. But just be aware that it could lead to problems down the road. <laughs> yes. yes. Don't make them too big. You're going to have yeah. back problems. Hey, now. Uh, Will. Yes. I made a video last Monday about the analog pocket. It's great. You I did. love it. Uh, a lot of people are really held up on the the part of the the review where i mentioned that uh the 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 game isn't really uh in there good and you could like if you like tap it you could like uh uh crash the game basically right 
uh, it's still a great thing. It's still a great yeah. console. I, I don't know why people are held up. I guess it's the one problem that you could have with it. Uh, yeah, but I mean, like, I've been playing mine, and I have not run into that problem once. Okay. So I don't think, I don't think it's a problem unless you make it a problem, really. So I, I want to hear you, you what... were tr- you were testing it. You were trying to see like what could happen. Well, and I think during no. normal usage, uh, I, I, I'll. It first happened when I was playing Pokemon Ruby, and I put the game, I put the the analog down on the table. Okay. And just putting it on the table made the game crash. Um, right. Now, it it also could be that the Pokemon Ruby was it needs to be cleaned. It was freaking a, a, a really bad cartridge. Um, yeah. So, uh, I feel like that problem is made worse depending on how dirty the cartridge or old the cartridge is. I mean, they're all old, mm-hmm. but how corroded the cartridge is. Um, right. And you know that that Tetris cartridge has seen better days. Yes. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to ask, what has your experience been with the analog pocket? Uh, well, it, it started off. It started off pretty fantastic. The first game I tried was Super Mario Brothers DX for the Game Boy Color. Um, I've never played a Game Boy or Game Boy Color game that looked this good. <laughs> like I'm just shocked. At how good looking that screen is and how like beautiful and crisp everything on it is. Yeah. Um, it sounds fantastic. It it feels fantastic to actually play. I have a problem with like when they do the four buttons for a two button system, I always wind up hitting the wrong things. I don't with this. It it feels right. It feels natural to hit the right buttons while you're playing even though you can customize it. Um, I haven't tried a, a GBA game yet. Uh, I've tried Super Mario, and I'm per- currently playing, actually, James Bond 007 for the original Game Boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Very weird game. Kind of into it. Uh, had a problem, though. Oh, I, it's worth, I remember. It's, it's w- important to talk about. So, I don't always have problems updating the firmware on analog uh, devices for some reason. I tried updating the firmware uh, for the Pocket to f- what the current firmware is. I do it. It was successful. But the problem was I turned it on and I got an error message. I got it read analog BIOS 1.4 link mode error. And I tried everything. I tried reinstalling the firmware. I tried finding a way to uh, downgrade to a previous firmware. I tried to see if there was a way to hard reset the thing to factory settings. Nothing was working. So I emailed, I actually had to email analog to like, what the hell is going on? My thing doesn't work anymore. While I was waiting for them to reply, I don't know what made me think of this. I plugged a game back into the system and it started working. There's a, there's a thing where if you set the console to boot straight to a cartridge and there's no cartridge in it, it won't boot to it won't boot to anything. It'll boot to that error message. Which is weird because that's not how the Mega SG works. That's not right. how any modern video game system works at all. So so let, let's back up a little bit. So so the analog yeah. has a it's a full it's got a full OS. So it's a Game Boy with yeah. a full OS. So if you turn it on by default, it opens its OS. And then Correct. it'll ask, do you want to play a game? And then you say yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. You have the option, though, to boot straight to the cartridge, just like a Game Boy does. When you turn on a Game yes. Boy, it just boots whatever's in the cartridge. If there's nothing in the cartridge slot, it just doesn't do anything. Uh, so on other analog consoles or other systems in, in modern day, if you turn on the console and there's no cartridge in there, but it's set to boot to the cartridge, it'll just boot to the OS. This one doesn't default to the OS. Yeah. Uh, I did hear back from Analog. Wait, hold and on. Stop. Lonosis has been a piece of shit all day. Bob <laughs> is the only YouTuber in- slash influencer I've seen with a positive review of the Analog? What? What? Who's had a, ne- who's had a negative review Name of the Analog one Pocket? one person. 
who had a negative review of the literally everyone across the board unanimously loved the pocket there has not been one bad review about this thing tech quickie didn't he love it yeah every like also that's one guy (laughs) who did he say the guy from linus tech tips he liked it. He gave it a pot. He said it was a good system. Yeah. What are you on about? Everybody loved it. it. Metal Jesus I, I just, it. people uh, think I didn't like, like it. it because I said that if you tap the cartridge, it, it, it don't work. Yeah. But just because it has a flaw, doesn't mean it's bad. Anyway. So, anyway. Uh, so yeah, that, so you, 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 put the new firmware on it through the micro SD card yeah. slot and it just yes. wouldn't boot after that because it, it kept trying to boot that. from a cartridge. Yes. And this is what analog had to say. Uh, kindly note that analog BIOS 1.4 link mode is what the system will show. If no game is inserted and you select play cartridge, this is designed for the pocket to receive game boy Advance data from other systems via a link cable. This is the intended operation. On the other hand, link mode is usually, sorry, on the other hand, error link mode is usually caused by cartridges whose pins need cleaning. Please clean your cartridge with at least 91% isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. Uh... <laughs> so, so it's so not th- a this bug, is... it's a feature. Yeah, no, this is not how it should work this this is a yeah. bad uh if this was as intended this is a bad thing this is very it, it yeah, should it's, if you turn it on there's nothing in there it should boot to the os like like yeah. any other console would yeah very strange. I, I think yeah and i don't understand how like why it would look look for a link cable when there's no cartridge in there <laughs> like, yeah I that's also like, weird that doesn't make any sense yeah so um, now I now I have it just to boot to the OS permanently. So no matter right. what, you know, it'll it'll work and it'll be fine. But other than that little hiccup, this thing's fantastic. Yeah, even the OS is great. Like like just yeah, navigating around is, is great, awesome. Easy to use. I somehow was able to update update the docs firmware and that thing runs really well. I did I need not to do get, that. I need to get a new 8 bit do controller because the one I usually use like only works with my switch now it doesn't work across multiple devices so i actually um, when I, I turned i took a brand new ape do s uh uh a brand new ape do pro 2 out of the box and yeah. turned it on and it immediately connected the second yeah. i turned it on it was in switch mode and it connected hmm. to the dock yeah interesting um but uh there were some problems afterwards. Like, like dur- before I made the video, everything worked awesome with the with the controller. It it was like yeah. the most seamless wireless controller usage I've ever seen in my life. Um, but like the next day or two days later, uh, it was having weird connection issues. It like wouldn't connect, or it would take a while to connect. And it's that was like ah, this is the the third party controller experience. I yeah. I know. <laughs> um, but anyway, my initial reaction was that it worked really well. Um, yeah. Did you get a case? I did not get a case. Ah, the case is something I didn't mention in my review. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is it. People kind of don't like, I saw Kevin Kenson's video who, who also really liked it. Yeah. Uh, he didn't really like the case. He thought it would be better if it like, uh, uh, hat was like bigger. You could put accessories in it and stuff. Um, I think it's kind of cool. Uh, it, it's already scratched to all hell. Um, see, I, I know Kevin, he was talking about like more like a travel case. Yeah. Like you would back in the day with your Game Boy. I would prefer it if there was a way to play the pocket in yeah. this case. That's my, that's my problem. Cause this is pretty much just a display case. This isn't uh, like a functional case. So I actually really like this because I like my naked devices. Uh, yeah. But I do want some, I do want it protected when it's, you know, like in my bag or something. Uh, I also. Uh, have, yeah, I don't want to get it. I have acrylic cases for my Game Boys, and they're like yeah. almost exactly like this. So it is. I do think this is kind of cool. Uh, also, what I really like about it is like my acrylic cases 
the, the Game Boy slides around. This doesn't slide around because there's little... Uh, okay, well, could you come off, please? There's, <laughs> there's four pegs here. Oh. And they go into the screw holes of the pocket. Interesting. So it just slides right in. And there you go. It doesn't move. That's good. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Also, uh, in my review, I talked about how the buttons, uh, I would like them to map so that A and B are this way and not this way. Because I think yeah. that's more comfortable. Uh, and turns out you can if you update the firmware. I just didn't. <laughs> I just completely yeah. neglected to do that in the review. Uh, but anyway, so you are liking your experience. I am liking my experience so far. Yes, uh, I got to go. Now it's making me want to go and get more Game Boy games, and Game Boy Advance games. And there was just a fucking convention that I was at and I didn't do that. Wow, you dummy. So uh, I wasn't thinking. So, but next time, next time there's a retro gaming expo here on Long Island, watch out because I'm coming for you. Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games. Although Game Boy Advance games are surprisingly expensive. Uh, yeah. The, I, all games are expensive right now. All games are expensive. There's like, there's like levels. Like Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, not as expensive as Game Boy Advance games. There, there's like a significant jump in price for Game Boy Advance games. Like Metroid Fusion is $70 just yeah, for crazy. the cart. That's absolutely crazy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I I really hope that somebody hacks this thing soon. So somebody did actually. Um. I figured it would be much quicker. Uh. But somebody did find a little bit of a way to hack this thing. So we got stacks smashing. Uh, on Twitter, who said they managed to get the Tetris ROM running on the analog pocket, no cartridge required. Okay. Unfortunately, though, it's like recompiled from the source code. I think. Um, uh, so, oh, and he also got Pokemon Red. Uh, he said this was done using binary patched ROMs. The location of the LCDC reg register, I guess, was changed to FF4E and the bit order of access to LCDC and STAT reversed. So he legitimately uh, had to do a lot of work to the ROM in order to get it to, to work correctly. Right. Uh, he said all ROMs would require patches, does not enable simple ROM piracy or so. Mm -hmm. So it looks like it would be probably be pretty complicated to get roms on there i think that somebody needs to put a whole new os on this thing well there is a second fpga chip in here right designed for like homebrew programming and stuff it's for so maybe cores. that's it's for extra yeah. co emulator cores yeah so maybe that's the back door into that's getting ROMs onto it. I believe that is the back door to getting ROMs for other systems to work on there. Uh, right. I don't know about getting uh, Game Boy and Game Boy Advance ROMs to work the way that they work through the cartridge. I, I think right. that it needs a complete overhaul or a side-loaded OS or something Yeah. Um, to get around that. You need to make the uh, analog pocket read the ROM correctly. Yeah. Uh there is also of course you can go the EverDrive route. Right. You just buy yourself an EverDrive which are just basically their Game Boy uh flash cartridges that you can load the ROMs up to and you can play it in, in original hardware. There's two problems with EverDrives though. Uh one, they're very expensive. Yes. There's different versions of them and the ones you want are generally the more expensive ones. And two, uh the Game Boy Advanced version it will play Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, but not natively. It actually emulates Game Boy and Game Boy Color games through software emulation. Oh, that's annoying. So, so it defeats you wanted... the whole purpose of, of the analog pocket. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so if you wanted the true gaming experience, you would have to get a GBA EverDrive and 
a Game Boy Color ever drive. That's super annoying. Yeah. And they're expensive. They are very expensive. And you like you need an SD card to put them on, and it's a whole big thing. Yeah, I was really hoping that it would be as easy to hack this thing as it was to hack the Mega SG. That thing was just day one. You freaking put ROMs on that thing. Um, I mean, give, give it time. I'm sure it'll happen, but I don't know. It might, it might be a while. Your best bet right now might just be the EverDrive route. Right. Um, anyway, I think it's a great little device. I think that uh, this thing is so popular I wish that they were able to fulfill more orders. People who are ordering it now aren't getting it till 2023. Yeah. It's like crazy. But I think it was so popular that there, I think that there's potential that people will develop stuff for it and that they'll be like, oh, a, yeah. Like a whole market of games specifically for, for this handheld, which would be yeah. incredible. Uh, and there's so, so many different development tools that people can use to, to yeah. make stuff. It's, it's very easy there's to a, develop and, stuff. We haven't even touched upon the fact that like Nano Loop is in there, which is a whole like music creation suite that I would love to test out. He's in the chat right now talking about it. Uh, yeah, he just got his. Did you see the resale prices on eBay? Uh, uh, I yes. heard about the resale prices. So many of the chats at six hundred dollars. I saw them all the way up to like two thousand. Jesus. Yeah. How comfortable is it to hold? It's very comfortable. People were complaining about the uh, the shoulder buttons. I think that they're okay. The, my only concern is that you touch the freaking uh, cartridge yeah. slot, and that that could be a problem. But I think the yeah, I think if, the 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 shoulder buttons are in a fine spot. If you're used to uh, the Game Boy Advance SP, which um, most people are, then you can get used to these because mm. they're about the same size. Um. So anyway. Uh, we are happy with our analog pocket. I wish I could play it more. Yes. I, I didn't really play it yeah, same. Uh, as much as I brought it with me, uh, but I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't play it at all. Yeah, it's too bad you're not coming for Christmas. I would have, we would have both brought it and just recreated, you know, Christmas 98 where we <laughs> yeah. had our game boys and didn't talk to anybody. Um, anyway, we have a lot of Ubisoft news to talk about. Yes. Before we do that, let's say. Uh, Winter Chimp, thank you for the 100 bits. Bob, I don't know about you, but I miss Will's baby face from the backlog days. It's saying no beard. Will's no beard face. I don't know if I can go back to that. Uh, my kid he, has not seen me. I mean, my kid can recognize me without a beard from like pictures and stuff, but I don't know if I could, you know, horrify her with no beard face. When's the mustache phase? How dad are I, you going? I'm I'm not going full dad. <laughs> it's cer like certain people can pull off a mustache. Our father can. I don't think we can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mimi memes say with 17 months, 17. Hope you get well soon, Babu Sam. Uh, everybody who is eligible, please look into getting your booster. I agree. Get it as soon as possible. Yes. I wish I got it sooner. And Spank if you wise, haven't gotten vaccinated yet fucking do that <laughs> yeah dumbass uh spank wise thanks for the four months uh anyway ubisoft news splinter cells okay. coming back get ready Let's... for a full open world with with towers that you gotta climb to to reveal half the map Ubisoft has greenlit the development of a Splinter Cell remake that will draw from the rich canvas of the brand led by Ubisoft Toronto. The game will be rebuilt from the ground up using Ubisoft's own Snowdrop engine, the same Yay. engine being used to develop Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, as well as Ubisoft's upcoming Star Wars game to deliver new next generation uh, visuals and gameplay and the dynamic lighting and shadows the series is known for. <sighs> I can't wait. For a brand new Ubisoft game in the Snowdrop engine to feel and play like every other Ubisoft game in the Snowdrop yeah. engine. <laughs> I did read that it's not going to be open world. It's specifically yes. not going to be open world. Yeah, we are going to keep it. They, they say uh, we are going to keep it linear and not make it open world. How do we make sure that new fans are able to pick it up and dive in? Make a good game. <laughs> <laughs> I think level design is very important to something yes. like this. Yes, uh, you can make I mean, the levels open because you have multiple paths to like doing something, but to have a full open world, that's not Splinter Cell. 
Yeah, I mean, do it like Hitman. Hitman's yeah. doing a great. Do yeah. something like that. And also, Michael Ironside plays Sam Fisher, or you have a new character because, yeah. as we've seen, you can't just replace him. I I feel like Splinter Cell Conviction came out. Okay, so so everybody liked Chaos Theory. That was the third game. Yes. Then uh, they made Double Agent. That game sucked. Right. Um, I thought it was okay, but it like was, it was fine. It was derivative of Chaos Theory. Yeah, and there was some weird stuff. Like the jail stuff was weird. Yeah, it was very weird. Uh, and then I feel like Conviction wasn't received well because of how different it was. But I absolutely loved that one. I think that I was think my favorite one. It was received well, but I think it was a noticeable departure from what Splinter Cell had been. It was a very right. different kind of game. I was totally down for that fact, fast action stealth. Yeah, me too. Um, and then uh, they made Blacklist, which was kind of like a mix between like yeah, the fast action had, and the old it style. It had the fast action and like the more slow, methodical uh, pace, which I think worked very well. I just think that the game they had created wasn't as tightly designed and focused as Conviction had been. And also the fact that Michael Ironside was not playing Stan Fisher. That that makes a big difference. Yeah. Uh, part of why I liked Conviction so much was because the story was really good, even though it was just yeah. an exact copy and paste of 24. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that kind of worked really well. I mean, that was the era when everybody was copying 24. Yeah. Uh... And Blacklist was just kind of did, did have a good story. It wasn't good. Yeah. Uh, didn't they like his daughter had nothing to do with it? That's like been the whole yeah. thing about all of the Splinter Cell games <laughs> was like the story about his daughter and the Blacklist yeah. just had nothing to do with it. Um, this is a remake. Yes. Okay. I mean, oh. I'm down for more Splinter Cell, but I, I am very skeptical about what Ubisoft can do with it because yeah. Ubisoft has just been missing for me. Yeah, uh, every game has been homogenous. It's been, you know, the same kind of open worlds with towers to climb and collectible nonsense for the past generation and a half, really. Yeah, they've been making the same game since uh, 2012. <laughs> More or less. I've been like, just completely a lot of people unimpressed. Say it, it, a lot of people say it's been like since Far Cry 3. I would argue it possibly has been since Assassin's Creed 2. Yeah. Assassin's Creed 2 was awesome, and then they made that game two yeah. more times. <laughs> yes. And, uh, yeah, Far Cry 3 was awesome, and then they made that game a million times also. Mm -hmm. uh, then, my fall-off yeah. was... I say I feel like I say this all the time. My fall-off was um, watched... Uh, well, I kind of fell off of Assassin's Creed with, like, Assassin's Creed 4. Um, yeah. And then I got Watch Dogs, and I was like, this feels like Assassin's Creed. And yeah. then I got... I was really excited for the division, and then I was like, "This feels like Watch Dogs. Why am I playing this? I could have just played Watch yeah. Dogs. And then why am I playing Watch Dogs? I could have just played Assassin's Creed." Yeah. So, so, uh, I, I, I and ever since then, every time I've touched a Ubisoft game, it feels exactly just like that, and I'm just not. Yeah, not I, for I've it. been very hesitant to pick up another Ubisoft game. One of the reasons being it's just been so, so samey. Yeah, I, like, I, I remember at at E3, I picked up ghost recon because i was like i want to play i'm excited for a new tom clancy game yeah and then i was like this feels like the division which felt like watchdogs i don't want to yeah. play this and yeah, then and, it, it, at, and even it, rainbow six siege when that first came out i was like this sucks this isn't rainbow six i don't want this now it's gotten a lot better and that's a yeah. completely different style of game than anything else they've been making so yeah that should show them that there is there is there is something to making a game that's different than their other games. Yeah. It, uh, it's it's sad to see them just pump out the same stuff over and over again because it's yeah. easy. Yeah. Well, in addition to a new Splinter Cell game, uh, they're also gonna, uh, reaffirming their commitment to sticking their hands in the NFT game. Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, Ubisoft CEO Yves Gilmo held a video Q&A this week to try and assure, reassure developers about the company's controversial new push 
behind NFTs, according to multiple sources who were in attendance, but they said his answers were vague and leaned on buzzwords like metaverse and web 3.0, leaving what? some as disheartened by the company's latest PR disaster as before. The meeting, which sources sources have said uh, wasn't yet scheduled when the week started, came after the official reveal of Ubisoft's new blockchain-based technology called Quartz was widely mocked online with a video showcasing it receiving 40,000 downvotes on YouTube. Kotaku previously reported that developers at the company were critical of the rollout as well, with an internal announcement exploding in hundreds of comments that ranged from skeptical to dismissive. The initiative kicked off uh, with three cosmetic NFTs for Ghost Recon Breakpoint, including one that required players to have logged over 600 hours in-game to redeem. Axios reported earlier this week that players have already start, uh, started at least trying to resell the tokens on third-party platforms for amounts that wishfully range from hundreds of dollars to hundreds of thousands of dollars. Inside the Ubisoft Paris studio, which makes Breakpoint, some developers are worried about the game they spent years rehabilitating after a disastrous 2019 launch, having its reputation dragged back through the mud just so the company can stake its claim in the latest speculative tech fad. Indeed, according to recent Ubisoft community reports via a uh, review by Kotaku, uh, the announcement of Quartz led to an unprecedented negative swing in player sentiment about the live service open world shooter. So earlier this week, Gilmo uh, parachuted into a Q&A with developers at the Paris studio, an action which sources say uh, he did not even undertake last summer when the company was completely upended by widespread allegations of sexual misconduct. <laughs> so it was these NFTs mean more to him than sexual misconduct allegations. Let me just repeat that for those in the back. According to them, the Ubisoft co-founder said the backlash to the court's announcement was, was expected and likened it to initial public outcry over previous new developments in the video game industry like DLC, microtransactions, and loot boxes. The implications seemed to be that NFTs would become similarly accepted over time. Some employees were concerned by the comparison since Ubisoft's own microtransactions like XP boosts still regularly draw scrutiny from players. Uh, so you're... like like they're they're basically like we will just force it on them yeah. they'll like it because we're gonna do it and then yeah. they'll like it uh when pressed uh for details about what new types of gameplay nfts and blockchain technology would make possible sources tell kotaku that gilmo didn't provide any instead he spoke <laughs> more broadly about how concepts like the metaverse would allow players to build and sell virtual houses and have agency in the game creation process itself Sources also say that Gilmo uh, frequently referenced Roblox, the gaming social media platform hybrid, recently valued at $45 billion. But it wasn't clear to them which aspects of Roblox's wild success would become more easily attainable through Quartz. They were also concerned about Gilmo's apparent enthusiasm for a gaming model, which, uh, which recent investigations by YouTube documentary group People Make Games have revealed to be built on player exploitation and shoddy regulation uh, leading to unsafe online communities. So and I actually saw that People Make Games on. video. Uh, they were yeah. specifically mentioning uh, Roblox because Roblox is a game where you can develop and play your own games inside of. Yeah. Um, and uh, a, a lot of kids play that game. Yeah, uh, and a lot that means a lot of kids develop games inside of Roblox, and you can buy games and like sell your own games, and you get paid in yeah. Robux, and, and like <laughs> it's really fucked up. It's like a weird exploitative thing to like get kids working as developers for free yeah. for what is essentially like an iTunes gift card. It's like yeah, it's like messed up. Yeah. Um, um, in addition to concerns about the impact of blockchain as technology on the environment and NFT's reputation for being pyramid schemes, some Ubisoft developers were also worried about how the integration of the technology will impact game development. The scope of many existing Ubisoft games already leads to a lot of crunch and cut features and adding yet another type of microtransaction economy uh, that needs to be managed could siphon away even more resources. Uh, so... 
I spent a lot of that time you were reading that article trying to figure out what the hell Web Web three is. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's just not a thing. And and it turns out yes. <laughs> yeah, no, it is a thing. <laughs> no, it's not though. It's like a it's like a, a speculative speculative uh, next version of the internet that doesn't and will not exist. <laughs> well, I mean, like. Web 2.0 like was a thing for a long time until like social media came along and then everyone's like, oh, that's Web 2.0. That's what I mean. It's a speculative yeah. future version of the Internet that never happened. Like like yeah. it's the Internet is just always changing and evolving and you don't know what's going to happen. So don't yeah. stop trying to like when you when you claim something's web 3.0 you're just claiming this is what's going to be the future of the internet and yeah. 9 90% of the time you don't know what the fuck you're talking about if you say that yeah uh i believe the first time i heard web 3.0 was in batman incorporated issue 8 from like 2009 oh, oh. and well. back then i thought it was just a science fiction shit <laughs> Uh, is Web 3.0 no. supposed to be the VR web? That's what the metaverse is trying to be. Yes. Is that. So, yes. Um, so, I actually support uh, uh, games with, uh, like, cosmetic items and stuff that you can buy in it. Uh, right. so that you, even if it's like super expensive, like even if there's just like, like a silly hat that you can buy for like a million dollars just to be like, I'm the guy with the silly hat. And even right. better if you can earn the, that status, if you can mm -hmm. play a game for a long time and then all of a sudden it unlocks a way you can purchase the cool item. So you can tell everybody, look at how fucking cool I am. I spent a billion hours in this game. And that's something that they're trying to do with these stupid NFTs. But mm -hmm. adding the blockchain onto it is just completely unnecessary. Yeah. There's no reason for there to be any sort of uh, 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 crypto tie-in at all. It, that's just that's just you trying to capitalize on uh yeah. on a on a new industry that i don't think will i don't think nfts are going to be around in the next few years i think everybody's going to realize that, that you can that. literally just save as and nobody gives yeah. a shit about about uh the, the fact that it you have a a, a crypto wallet a, that says that you own it nobody cares master of it yeah yeah so uh yeah i don't think I think the fact that it's it, it aside from all of the a lot of people hate NFTs because of the environmental impact. I Which just is, think you know a concern. It's significant, but I just think the big issue with NFTs is that they're fucking stupid. Yeah, <laughs> and they don't yeah. make they don't they shouldn't exist at all. Yeah, like 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 they're they're the idea was a it was great in theory that. Uh, artists like digital artists should be paid for what they do. Yes. Now it's just a bunch of assholes freebooting off of what digital artists do and just yeah. making NFTs out of them. So it, it ended up. So if that's the argument for NFTs, it's moot now. It's, it's, it's actually more harmful to digital artists than it was. Yeah. Um, DC, so, DC comics sent me a, an nft for like their fandom event like if you signed up you they'll send you like a, an nft so i have this like superman nft and i don't know what the fuck i'm supposed to do with it <laughs> it's currently sitting in an account i don't touch just like taking up all this data that is could be going to s literally anything else so you, so that means a you have ethereum technically what am i supposed to do with it uh, what what, what I do I do? I already like took a screenshot of it. <laughs> so how do you how do yeah how do you cash out your Ethereum from your Superman I NFT or whatever the hell no is? Fucking idea. You know what's really sad? Nope. You see the Stan Lee one. I have seen the Stan Lee one. Yeah. So Stan Lee, uh, as you all know, famously not alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they're just somebody's just taste. They're just. 
is using his uh, legacy as just a means to make some money. And they were even doing that when he was still alive. Yeah. Um, they freaking are making NFTs. They're trying to sell NFTs on his freaking uh, uh, Twitter. And I know Funko is currently trying to do that with Bob Ross, who was also famously opposed to uh, commercialization of this. Yeah. <laughs> famously not, not around alive. right now. Yeah. Can't really hang, you know? There was a good yeah. tweet. I think Dolan Dark did a good tweet back that was just like, you know, no. I thought it would be at the top. Yeah. Anyway. Um yeah, so uh, it's fucking stupid for for t- t- yeah. so like I'm down again. I'm down with the idea of like if you're playing Ghost Recon for a long time, here's a really cool mask that only you can get yeah. in the game. Like that's awesome. I think that that's cool. But uh, linking Ethereum to it or whatever the hell just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and like you, you recently saw, I forgot their name, but like the developers of Stalker Two were going to put NFTs in the game, and they said okay we've heard you you don't want nfts we will not put nfts in the game ubisoft is being like what's that you say more nfts <laughs> coming right up the sad thing it's is just- though that like uh the ceo's right like w- when when people w- when people came at ea for loot boxes that was like a whole big conspiracy a few years ago uh with right. with uh battlefront 2 that uh, well it this is that's different because the way EA handled it was it was random and it was and it, like the gameplay uh, it would take to get it on your own was like impossible to achieve as opposed right. to paying an exorbitant amount of money for it. That's and it wasn't properly disclosed. It wasn't properly like, you know, customers were not properly informed of this. Didn't they specifically say they weren't going to do that and then they did it? And then they did it, yeah. So, 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 so they went back. They they said we're okay. We're getting rid of the the loot boxes or whatever, or we're making it. They changed everything about the game. Yeah. Uh, and then the game came out, and then a few months later, they put it right back in. And and yeah. and literally everybody forgot about it. <laughs> like well, there were articles and stuff, but people cared significantly less than they did when it first happened. So EA got away with it. I mean the the loot boxes. I mean I haven't played. I haven't played the multiplayer. I've only played the single player in that stupid game. Mm-hmm. But like as far as I know, the loot boxes aren't as. It's not as bad as it used to be. Like the odds are a lot better. The prices are a lot better. Um, but like you can still have loot boxes. You just have to make them fair, and you have to make them you know not an exorbitant amount of money, and you have to make the the chance of getting it in gameplay better. Or don't have them get it. Don't have it achievable in gameplay at all. And that's more understandable. The whole NFT situation, like this, is clearly latching onto a fad that has happened in another uh, sector of the tech world that people are trying to add to their game because it sounds cool. Because it sounds like a good buzzword. Because people right. think NFTs are valuable when, in the long run, they're no more valuable than a JPEG. I'm just saying that. Uh... The, the general gaming audiences have proven to these giant gaming companies that uh, people will just deal with it and buy it anyway. So, so, so we're the problem. <laughs> Maybe, but I feel like this is diff. This is different. Mm-hmm. I feel like. You know, well, yeah, I just think my- NFTs are specifically NFTs are a bad idea. They're just stupid. Yeah. And and right. I don't think people are gonna. Uh, it's not gonna. It's not gonna be popular in like a few months. And like people no, are just people gonna stop. Still, people still get mad about microtransactions all the time, and right. people still get mad about loot boxes all the time, especially when they're implemented in games that they that don't need them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, people are still salty about those. I think it's just it's. We've come to accept that for certain games they're inevitable, but for certain games they're unnecessary. And when they're put in there, that's when we have a problem. Something like NFTs don't really have a place in any video game at right. this point in time, or ever really. Yeah. Um. Could the Wolf Den make their own NFT? Sure. What what will it be? Yeah, you know what I really liked when NFTs really started taking off earlier in the year. Uh, I Dubs did his own balls, and that was great. 
That is good. Sold for a lot. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, another reason why I like uh, microtransactions and in-game items and stuff is that uh, it allows games to be cheaper for the g- most people. And then the people who are willing to pay for the game, the people who have, uh, uh, you know, just income they could spend, uh, they end up paying for the game for the people who don't have the money. So a game right. like Fortnite, everybody can play that game totally fine and be on the same playing field all across the board. But there are people who just have a shit ton of money who are buying all the in-game items or their mom's credit card are paying yeah. for that game's good development for other people who don't have that much money. So, uh, I'm for that. But again, tying crypto to it just don't make any sense. Right. Uh, anyway, there's still more Ubisoft news. Uh, yes, everybody's leaving. People are leaving Ubisoft. Uh, Ubisoft is losing developers in what some employees are calling the great exodus, according to a new Axios report. Low pay, better opportunities, and frustration with the company's workplace misconduct allegations are cited as reasons for higher for the higher attrition rate. Uh, Axios interviewed 12 current and former Ubisoft developers about the resignations, noting that the five top 25 credited developers on Far Cry 6 have left the studio. 12 people out of the top 50 credited developers from Assassin's Creed Valhalla left too. But it's not just big name leads and developers. Axios said that Ubisoft's Canadian studios have seen have seen losses. Two developers said the resignations have stalled or slowed projects at the studio. Ubisoft reported reportedly offered pay raises to all employees at its Canadian studios in an attempt to stop workers from leaving. Uh, Ubisoft chief chief people officer Anika Grant told Axios that the raises helped improve retention by 50% with retention rates sitting at 12%. However, the raises only applied to Canadian studios and other Ubisoft developers are frustrated that they haven't gotten raises. What is retention? Uh, I know what it means. Why can't I formulate the words? Uh, Holding on to. No, I know. I know what the word literally means. I mean, like, are they referring to the retention of of like when I hear retention, I think like uh like watch time, like like people who are watching yeah. this. If like I do were... a good video, if I make a good video, people watch it for longer. If does this mean their employees are making better games that people are playing for longer, or does this mean that they're hold- no. oh, this, this means that they're holding on to employees for longer? Yes, that's what yeah. it obviously that, means. Bob. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ubisoft, like Activision Blizzard, has faced allegations of workplace misconduct and mishandling of sexual harassment cases in recent years. Uh, Kotaku report in 2020 outlined a culture at Ubisoft in which sexism and harassment was normalized. Bosses constantly emphasized moving on and looking forward while ignoring the complaints, concerns, and cries of their employees, one developer told Axios. The departure of workers at Ubisoft appears to be in line with what some are calling the Great Resignation, a movement in which people across industries are quitting jobs at record rates. Montreal, home to Ubisoft's biggest studio with more than 4,000 employees, is an expanding game development hub, making it easier for workers to look for something new in the city they already work in. Ubisoft has not responded uh, to Polygon's request for comment, although a spokesperson told Axios that it had hired 2,600 workers since April. So uh, Ubisoft is Canadian, so having the raises only apply to Canada makes a little bit of sense. I mean, it's still stupid, but like... uh, Very stupid, yeah. They also... Canada, especially Montreal, gives a lot of crazy subsidies to specifically game companies. So they're probably saying like, we're only giving it to Canada because it's all we're getting government money for this. Um, Yeah. But this isn't like a game like industry thing this is a worldwide company thing like people are just sick of uh, the the yeah you know being uh slave to the man i just yeah. watched this great video by healthy gamer he's a uh uh like a twitch therapist dr k mm-hmm. uh why millennials are quitting their jobs um and part of it is I just put it, I thought I put it on screen. I'm so stupid. Uh, this guy, uh, why am I was acquainted that job? It's like he posted two days ago. It's the last video he uploaded. Uh, healthy gamer, GG. Um, 
it was a great video and it basically talked about how uh part of what he said was uh you can't just give people more money like that's historically what you do to like if if people if there's a lot of employee turnover you just give people more money and they're just satisfied right. with that but covid taught people that oh maybe money isn't really what's gonna make me happier maybe just being able to live my life like on a normal day like maybe i have yeah. to go like to the store in the middle of the day and i don't want to have to you know like i have nothing going on at work so i get to like play with my kid for a little bit people are willing to take a pay cut in order to uh have a better quality of life especially at work so companies like google recognize that and they let the employees come in whenever they want Here's the cafeteria that's open for 18 fucking hours or whatever the hell. Have whatever food you want. Do it as long as you get your work done. We don't care. And people stay and they don't even have to pay them as much because people are just willing to be there. So instead of Ubisoft uh, trying to give these people raises, what they could do is just not have crunch time and shit like that. Yeah. Uh, just treat people better. Maybe not have so much sexual harassment in the office. Um, just a thought. Just a thought. Maybe just be a better company. Yeah. Uh, so I hope that they learn the right lessons from this and don't just try to throw money at the problem because that's not going to work. Yeah. They, well, people are more they complex than like, that. They're just now throwing money at the problem and I think it's a little far a little too late because there, you know, there have been multiple reports about like prob like internal problems at Ubisoft that they just don't address. They just like will just sweep it under the rug and try to move on. It, it that only works for so long. Right. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these big companies, and even in gaming, they're going to have to face a lot of uh, this new, like, uh, work culture that's been developing. Yeah. Like, a lot of people need to start conforming to what uh, we need as, as you know, yeah. uh, the working class. Uh, that wasn't really the point of Dr. K's video, though. He said a lot of shit. I, go watch his video. His <laughs> video was awesome. He, he said a lot yeah. of different stuff. Yeah. Um, Uh, Ubisoft has an implied policy that you should always do overtime, and if you don't, your contract is not renewed. A lot of game Dude, companies that's do that. Problem, yeah. A lot of game companies support that sort of yeah. culture instead of like, "Hey, man, you should take it easy because uh, you're you're not gonna be a good employee if you overwork yourself." Like they should think about yeah. it like that. <laughs> like, like, like you're gonna quit and you're gonna work shitty if you overwork yourself so uh that's how they should look at it not uh make not finish this product now so we can make the money now yeah anyway uh we have a couple more topics but we should plow through them as quick as possible we will we're very late we right absolutely now. plow through them yes uh we are we have got five new games for sega genesis uh as wow. on switch online uh altered beast toe jam and earl Dynamite Heady, Sword of Vermilion, and Thunder Force 2. Uh, They're all available now on the Sega Genesis on Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack. All of them, except for Thunder Force, are available in the Sega Genesis Classics Collection already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, Altered Beast is something for certain people to be excited about. Toe Jam and Earl. I kind of want to play it because like, yeah. I don't remember much of Toe Jam and Earl. It, I, I remember it being very weird. Uh, the levels are procedurally generated, but it's got a great soundtrack. See, I don't. Every time I hear about Toe Jam and Earl, I feel like I'm learning something new. Like I didn't know it was procedurally yeah. generated. Yeah. Um. But anyway, uh, it's cool that we got five. That's yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> uh, otherwise, not that exciting of a collection. Yeah. There. I know. Uh. What are these most completed games of 2021? Oh, yeah. This is a little interesting. So, you want to just skip to what the most completed games were? Yeah. Uh, Metroid Prime and Resident Evil Village were the most completed <laughs> games of the year. Back up. Specifically, Metroid Dread and Resident Evil Village. You said That's Prime. what I meant. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Uh, so, the top five most completed games of this year... In order, from most completed down, uh, Resident Evil Village, Metroid Dread, Ratchet and Crank Rift Apart, It Takes Two, and Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. Weird. 
very weird so, uh, so, I mean, collection. That's an easy game to complete. Super Mario, like Bowser's Fury. That's a game just like right. very, very easy to, to complete that game. Um, yeah. Ratchet and Clank, I'm surprised by. Like I knew it sold a decent um, amount, but uh, to be the most complete, to be the third most completed game of 2021. I, I'm surp- I am surprised by the top two because I'm surprised that Resident Evil Village, not that it wasn't going to sell well, but you know it, it is an M-rated horror game, so that kind of does limit the, s- the scope of it. Mm-hmm. And the fact that it's the most completed game of the year means that, like it must have, you know, really hit a nerve with a lot of people to want to see it through to the end. And Metroid, as we've seen on this podcast, this was a lot of people's first Metroid game, and it, it's pretty difficult. So the fact that people were willing to stick with it and try to beat it says a lot. Uh, yeah, I I think Metroid gets its hooks in you. You like wanna. It's oh, yeah. one of those games you think about when you're not playing it. Um, yeah. I'm actually surprised by the amount of people who finish games. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it'd be easy to fall off a game. You know how like it's you you have to like when you're making a video or something, you have to keep people interested the whole time. So like yeah. like, like you need to, like everybody is looking for a reason to stop. You need to give them yeah. a reason to keep going. So uh, the fact that most people finish games when they buy them is weird to me. Uh, f- what was it? Uh, if there's another bit of data of uh, the top games that users stopped playing for whatever reason. On the top of that list are Valheim, uh, 12 Minutes, and Loop Hero. All right, Valheim is like a like an always online like like survival game, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so you can't really abandon that game. Uh, f- it's well, not I like mean, a- if it hasn't. If it has an end game, then yeah, you can abandon it. And 12 minutes is just the same 12 minutes over and over and over again until you do yeah. the thing right. So like some people probably don't even realize that they <laughs> didn't beat the game. Yeah. Uh and Loop Hero is a f- it's uh you can't finish that game. <laughs> oh no, yeah, you can. I'm dumb. I'm thinking of Clone Hero. Never mind. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait. What's what's this now? The site also tracks games that are sitting in the most player backlogs. Uh, at the top of that list is Near Replicant version one point two two four seven four four eight seven one three nine, and then also uh, uh, there's another one. Resident Evil. I found uh. The oddest bit of data I found while digging around how long to beat.com and all of its stats was the overall most completed game by all of its users, and that would be Portal. I mean, that's that's two hours. I mean, that that game. That's a two hour game. Yeah. And it, like Valve sells that for a dollar. Everybody should play Portal. Time. It's amazing. And it's Everyone should. It's very good. Yes. Uh, quick, let's talk about Gex. Oh, Gex you is all remember back, Gex? Everybody. It's this guy. It's this guy. Note to self: Don't drink tap water at Jerry Garcia's. <laughs> right? Remember him? Uh, Gex, one of the many forgotten video game mascots of the '90s, could possibly be making a comeback. Uh, following on from Square Enix's announcement in 2015 that it would allow developers to create games based on older IDOS IPs as part of the Square Enix co- uh, collective project, the company has now filed a trademark for Gex in Europe. While it might not necessarily mean anything, the fact that it's going through this much effort for Gex has some fans of the anthropomorphic Gecko convinced that something is happening in the near future. Clock. What time do you think it says on the clock? I was hoping he would do another line. <laughs> I couldn't find like a. Did you just reminds me of Jackie Chan's bathroom? This is like playing. There you go. Oh god. He says like really weird lines about celebrities. Yeah. I don't know why we're going back to Gex. It doesn't. <laughs> I don't know either. That's not. Hey, a... That was such a. This was that... such a weird fucking series, dude. That's not one we need back in this world. No. I think we're cool with, with just leaving it where it was. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, last one. Hades wins a huge award. 
uh, a Hugo Award specifically. A huge O Award. But it is huge because it is the first video game to ever win a Hugo Award. I don't know what a Hugo Award is. Hugo Award is like one of the most prestigious uh, literary awards given for science fiction or fantasy work. Oh. And they recently created a video games category and Hades was the first game to win it. Oh, good. They, also I mean, nominated, that exist, uh, video games also nominated. Also nominated were Spirit Fair, The Last of Us Two, Animal Crossing: New Horizons, Final Fantasy VII Remake, and Bla- Blazeball or Blazeball. I have no idea what the hell's right. Blazeball. <laughs> <laughs> so well, that's yeah, good. There you go. Uh, I don't know. I mean. People like the story. I don't know much about the story. Yeah. I gotta play the game. Everybody's freaking loves. Yeah, that I, game. I, everybody talks like such good things about Hades. I feel like I would hate it, but put a freaking demo out there. I need to play more yeah. Super Giant stuff. Uh, I'm always interested in their games. Uh, it is yes. Super Giant, right? Am I making that up? Yeah, no, it's Super Giant. I'm always interested in their games, and I never play them. Why didn't they talk about Nintendo? Why am I always reading Linosis' stuff? I don't know why. I'm like sniping your your chats out uh i i have nothing to say about so t- nintendo minute isn't a show anymore yeah i have i I've, I've never even watched it i've watched it i think once yeah. when they unboxed something new. i think it was the red nintendo switch or something yeah uh i've just never i i i'm not i have no i don't know anything about nintendo minute i just know they stopped making nintendo minute and i don't know nobody knows why <laughs> um what is Nintendo Minute? It is uh, a sh- is a is a show on Nintendo's YouTube channel where uh, two people uh, talk about Nintendo stuff. <laughs> yeah, so you uh, know, like this one. <laughs> yeah, except uh, they're literally paid by Nintendo to do it. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, and that's uh, it. That's it. That's all the news. We gotta hurry up. We're late. This is a yeah. late one. Oh yes. We talked yes, way we too are. much about Nintendo indie games that weren't that exciting. Um, <laughs> Spankwise, thanks for the four months. The struggle bugs, thanks for the three months. COVID special, yeah. Here we are. And Eric, thanks for the forty-six are. whole months and for being a guy. You know. <laughs> uh, hey. Oh wait, we got it real quick. Just do one of these bad words. <laughs> This is by Carl Hess. Uh, this is can't believe wearing masks when we walked in and then taking them off when we sat down didn't work. <laughs> so we're a little restaurant, little COVID restaurant joke for you. A little COVID yeah. restaurant goof for you. We're supposed to go out to dinner tomorrow night for mom's birthday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This just see you later. Think of that. See Thanks. You later. <laughs> hey, at least you're not you know how that works. At least you're not in friggin' the city. True. I, I see like 14 people on the, on my way to get the mail. Yeah. Well, um, we're going on a Wednesday, so hopefully that's at a time when nobody's going out. To it's eat. it's the Wednesday before Christmas. <laughs> Everything's a shit show around here. Yeah. Guys. We're talking to you real quick. S- yes. First, first, we're getting to the people from last week. Yes. Who were in the we YouTube will... comments. But people start leaving your questions and comments in the Twitch chat so we'll get to you when we were done with everybody else. Fred says, Merry Christmas. Thanks, Fred. Oh, thank you. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas to you, too. Etre says, I love how Will just knows everything about every video game ever. Bob will be like, huh, what's this game all about? And Will is like, ah, yes, the game is from X year and 15 different variations and is banned in two different countries all off the top of his head. Absolute mad lead. I, I, it's, I am an absolute fucking lunatic when it comes to things like that. Our parents will always say, imagine if you just did that with like I don't know, science? <laughs> yeah, like why couldn't she use that knowledge to become a doctor or a lawyer or something? Yep. Like, well, because that shit's boring. <laughs> Gross. This is fun. Uh, 
Keyholes says, my year in review timeline is a bit d- depressing. All of my hours fall off to zero for four months, starting from August when I had eye surgery and couldn't see to play for a while. Suffice to say, when I first played Animal Crossing again, all my villagers thought I died. Oops. Well, did you explain to them that you had eye surgery and that you yeah. had a good reason? Were they worried about you? Well, I hope you're... Uh, it seems like you've been better because you are here uh, talking to us. Yeah. Uh, so that's good. Uh, the Script Flip Network says, man, forget what people say. These guys are cool in my book. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Thanks, man. Chad Dominique says, the Q&A segment of this podcast should be posted on Wolf Den Clips. I'm <laughs> laughing so hard. I thought about it. Last week, if you didn't see last week's Q&A section, uh, yeah. it's all about you people, the chat, gaslighting me into thinking I don't know how to turn off a PlayStation 5 and me being very angry about it. Melon says, Will, it's always cool when a superhero gets a solo game. Me suddenly remembers Aquaman Battle for Atlantis. Uh Oh, I mean, it is cool that there's an Aquaman game. It's just unfortunate that it's dog shit. <laughs> It kind of looks exactly like Superman 64. It does. And it's a GameCube game. Is it a fighting game? <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's a fighting game, but there's also like an open world aspect where you can swim around Atlantis. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're in the chat real quick. We got to go, though. Yeah, I got pizza to eat. Good. Uh, hey, Turner Tech, thanks for the five months, bro. Thank you. Lulu Lunatic says, Merry Christmas, Wolf Bros. Stay safe, everyone, and get better, Bob. Thanks, dude. I am better. I just need to not have COVID. <laughs> and they use Hook uh, Hand Aquaman, too. So unfortunate. Is that, do we like Hook Hand Aquaman or no? Okay. Hook Hand Aquaman is fine. You know, it, it, he grows on you. Uh, uh, Luna, Bob, do you consider yourself a girl boss? Sure. <laughs> Why not? Bob, glad Super Mario for you. Thank you for being pro science. Have a good holiday, guys. Thank you very much. I trust people who are smarter yeah. than me. Yeah. Uh, it's. It, I wouldn't call it pro science as much as I would call it pro common sense. But that's <laughs> another story for another time. When I when my car makes a weird sound. I uh, don't assume what the problem is. <laughs> yeah. I ask a professional. <laughs> I believe the problem is my brakes. <laughs> uh, Mecha Dragon. Well, I hope you get to see a chance to see Spider-Man. I saw it in 40X theater. The experience was amazing. Okay. Two things. One, I am. I don't like the idea of 40X theaters. I don't want to go to a theme park. When I go to a movie, I want to go see a movie. Two, I was very close to going to see Spider-Man sometime soon, but my brother and all my friends started getting COVID, so I'm like, I'll wait. Yeah, listen, I don't want to use my privilege here as an influencer, but who got that bootleg? I got to see Spider-Man before yeah, I, before it freaking gets spoiled I, for me. Like, I'm looking, and all I see are cams, and I already had at least three things spoiled for me so far, and not 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 a fan of it. <laughs> I need to see Spider-Man now. Put it on my yeah. desk. Hannah in the chat goes, you don't have a car. Shut up, Hannah. Ban Somebody time her out. She's calling me out. <laughs> I had a car. All right. And then I became a hipster and moved to Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, when does influencing start and peer pressure start? Peer pressuring start? It's all the same. It's yeah. It's there. There is no difference. Uh, uh, the cam from yesterday is good. No commercials. What does that mean? What does commercials mean? Yeah. Why would well like trailers? Who films the trailers when they're bootlegging a movie? Do they put commercials in pirated stuff? Like that'd be kind of smart. Like it gets uh, yeah. a lot of views. Like why not I put commercials? Yeah. In. Uh, Bob, you have to update your video from March 2020 in the early days of the pandemic. Uh, says Jeffrey. 
So on the youtube.com slash Bob Wolf, I have a uh, video about uh, when COVID started. I made a second oh, yeah. whole video uh, and I just hated editing it. It was so sad. <laughs> mm. So uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. Bob, how's your latte art coming along? Um, it's all right. I, I basically just make a heart every time. Uh, sometimes I mess it up, but yeah, I, I'm not, I'm still not good at latte art. <laughs> <laughs> Today I had to make it with my mask on and my gloves. I felt like I was a real barista. Oh God. It doesn't sound fun at all. Uh, what do you uh, recommend for a first game slash accessory for a switch? Oh, led love your videos. Thank you very much. Um, first game first first game uh mario odyssey or breath of the wild that's usually everybody's first switch game recommendation. or even bowser's fury is really good yeah um otherwise i mean accessory i think you need a case and i think you either need a pro controller or an uh ape do pro 2 Yes. I would say if you can get your hands on a spare AC adapter, those are good oh, yeah. to have. Yeah. Get a Nintendo one. Yeah. Um, I think we're done here. We got to leave. I got to eat pizza. Good. I got to pee. Thanks uh, for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archived version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So go and check us out over there on demand wherever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on app, anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice, Apple, Spotify, Google, Wherever the fuck you want to listen to us. No matter where you get the show from, though, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Thanks about when he's in the tub. This is like smoking crack at Don Sheetle's house. <laughs> <laughs> that was Donkey. That wasn't yeah. Gex. Uh, guys, thanks for being here. Uh, I'm not going to stream tomorrow. I want to make a video. I'll probably stream Thursday. I got nothing else to do. What are you doing? You want to hang out? Yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> Who's on right now? Uh, uh, AJ's doing a tier list of every Smash Ultimate reveal. So why don't you go bother him? Yeah. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Uh, we'll see you on the next Wolf Den podcast, and I'll see you on streams here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast on a podcast service or whatever, come over to Twitch sometime. Yeah. Uh, you can hang out and talk live, live, live. Uh, anyway. We'll see you later, though. Goodbye. Bye. Merry he said Merry Christmas. I, I, I cut you off.